Hey guys, welcome back to the stream. I hope you can hear me okay because I was testing the uh, recording before and I'm not sure if it's loud enough, so just let me know if it's too quiet. Also, I'm glowing. Did you see? <laughs> I'm glowing. Uh, it's just because the screen is making me really bright tonight for some reason, so maybe I need to go outside sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, tonight we're going to finish up these Raccoon Boys. Thank goodness, because I've I've really enjoyed working on them so far, but I will be happy to see them done as well. So, uh, most of what I see here I'm really happy with. I love the colors that we went with, and uh, I think all the design is pretty much there. We can obviously still finagle things, but most of the work tonight is just going to be in the raccoons, because I want to, you know, put little tick marks on them and make it all belong. So uh, I'm just going to dive in. I'm listening to music tonight, so <laughs> I have a little bit of entertainment. And let me know if you can hear it also. I think it could like leak out of the headphones a little bit, so just let me know if you can hear anything. Uh, and also give me any suggestions. If you see something and you're just like, hey, you changed this, then uh, we'll see if I do it. <laughs> you know how stubborn I am. <laughs> Okay, so I've got my balloons and raccoons on one layer, and I've got all my plants and bugs on another. For now, I'm going to leave the plants and bugs and dive into just cleaning up some of the shapes on the raccoon boys and the balloon boys. And then we'll get into a little bit of line work. So I'm going to go back to the bristle bomb brush. I basically have two main brushes that I love to use, uh, and one of them is the bristle bomb. All of them are Kyle Webster. Although I do love uh, using brushes that other people have made as well. I just found that for this particular style of project, these two brushes work perfectly for my needs. So right now I'm just kind of going through and I'm going to not necessarily clean too much. It's not like about getting a perfectly lined edge or anything. Um, I actually really like the mess, but it is about having a definitive shape overlap. So. It's not just like this meandering thing that really doesn't look like anything. And it's definitely about getting some values that pop off of each other and make it feel like they're transparent balloons. So like this one's dark, this one's like pretty light. I might actually darken it just a tad bit. And then you see this middle portion where they overlap and no matter what that color is, it shows that there's like a transparent quality to it, even if it totally doesn't seem like what should happen with physics and color and overlap. <laughs> we don't care about reality. Come on. We're artists. <laughs> we can do what we want. Hey, James is here. He says, audio is good. Skin tones are <laughs> a bit bright glowy. That's I'm glowing, James. Don't you know that? Uh, <laughs> and the darks are pretty black in the video feed from the webcam right now. Contrast is probably a little blown out. Okay, let's uh, do something real quick, because I can do that very easily. Video capture, configure video, contrast down a tad. Let's see if that works. What do you think? Am I gray now? I, I really don't care. It's, it's more for the expressions than for anything else. And I talk with my hands, so you can tell what I'm doing. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, if you uh, like that, then boom. Hopefully it helps. James is obviously the ultimate judge. The blacks are a little better, he says. Probably everything else is off, but it's just, you know, the way this webcam is, there's not a whole lot of control over the, the output. I mean, the change I just made was an OBS, so that tells you, like, I'm not really working with the webcam itself. I'm working with the compression thing or stream casting, whatever you call it. But you know, James, the jankier it looks in the beginning, like these are our first streams, the jankier it is, the better it'll look in the future. So, I mean, we just have up to go give ourselves an easy landing pad. And thank you guys for tuning in for the early streams. You guys will always be the the first, the truest fans. <laughs> uh, 
and then I'll quit streaming like next week and then everybody will be like what you streamed whatever it honestly is mostly for just having kind of a video diary of this time because I do feel like things are going by so quickly that I can't really write things down even quick enough to mark what's happening so having a little video quality thing, like I used to do uh, YouTube videos of the experiences. You guys have probably seen them because they have a lot of residency stuff on them. Uh, but it takes up so much time. It takes a really long time to get a whole video done. It's no small feat. Hey, Zona's in the house. <laughs> uh, yeah, you say the blacks are a little better, James? Excellent, I'm glad. <laughs> As long as you're happy. That's the whole goal here, okay? And thank you for returning, Zona. And wow, we have six people right off the bat. You guys, this is growing. It's becoming a community. Thank you for joining. Uh, again, I'm just cleaning up the raccoons tonight, starting in with the balloons. And I'm not going for clean, clean. I'm just going for messy, clean. Definitive shapes, but with rough edges. <laughs> My life. Uh, so... Yeah, tonight, hopefully, we will finish off the raccoons and see a beautiful pattern. Maybe we could even apply it to some of the mock-ups that I saved out. Mm. I've got, like, wrapping paper, an apron, and, like, a shopping bag mock-ups I found for free online just by, like, Googling uh, mock-ups. <laughs> like, shopping bag mock-up, you know? There's actually a site that has all of them on there. And they're really good quality. It's basically just PSDs that have a masked out area where you can put your uh, pattern on it. And it looks really nice. And especially if you're trying to license your patterns or artwork of any kind, um, putting it in the context helped people so much just understand instantly what it would look like on a product if they were to, you know, bankroll it or whatever. Zona says, this is why my videos for Tutorial Tuesday are taking some time. Oh my gosh, I understand. Ugh, it takes forever. <laughs> like, I want to make videos, but it's its own career, I feel like. It's just such a thing. Um, and for the residency, they absolutely love seeing videos. Uh, it's like a whole facet of the residency itself is just video creation. Uh, but it's, as Andrea and I have uh, bonded over, it's very <laughs> difficult. I think she's much better at it than I am. She, like, regularly vlogs and... Uh, is she has like a mentor and everything for her video making and brand building on YouTube and all that stuff. Like there's just so much that goes into it that I am not willing to do. <laughs> Cause for me, I just want to draw. <laughs> like that's all I want to do with my time. Everything else is like a cool thing, but it's definitely not the goal of what I'm doing. So you kind of have to put in perspective what's most important to you. It's just not that important to me. So sad. Mock-ups are really fun to make. I enjoy them just because it kind of is that last 10% that puts it, you know, ding, done. <laughs> and other people can definitely relate to it. It's almost like, okay, so you guys know I've talked about it before. Um, I'm obsessed with looking at houses online. And I think that one of the biggest parts of like looking at houses is visualizing what your stuff would look like inside of them. And apparently this is a big deal for like, uh, like, you know, shows that mock up houses, basically, like a lot of them are just based around decorating houses for sale. And it's like, I like seeing empty houses. I like seeing the walls so I can really judge where my bed's going to fit in this room or whatever. And other people are like, I can't visualize it without decorations. I don't know. I guess everybody's different, but I love seeing empty houses so I can imagine my own stuff in there. Hey, people are here. Ooh, a new friend. Nucci? Was that right? <laughs> uh, Zoni, you said it takes so long to set up, edit, thumbnails, social media cuts, and tag properly. Like, it's, yes, all of those things are just, like, part of it. It's insane. Like, that's not even the, the whole production of it. Like, I, you know, like, finding a day where you put on makeup and like get in front of a camera if you're doing like a face thing or getting the footage of you using certain things. I did like a product review of HP because they gave me this entire computer setup, which is, and it took so long. 
just to get all the footage of every little thing. And I did like unboxing stuff. Anthony and James helped me with that. That was a fun night. <laughs> but you know, when you're at like two in the morning filming stuff all sweaty and weird, does that really, is that the footage you want out on the internet forever? <laughs> but it is fun. Uh, Nucci says, hi, Anna. You can even get fabric printed with patterns. I've always wanted to make some stuff myself. Seriously. Oh, it pronounced the G in Gnucci, right? Yeah, is that it? Gnucci? I'm going to be saying it a lot because I like to read out the chat. Um, I still need to find a way to put the chat on this screen so that we can like see it live feed, I think. Um, but the idea of you guys talking like and me talking, I kind of have to say the question so that I can... You know, like, if somebody's watching the video back, they'd just be like, wait, what? <laughs> Anyways, uh, I would love to get fabric printed. I've had some people or friends of mine at uh, conventions and stuff make tablecloths of their patterns on there, and it's so freaking cool, because you're just, like, you're at branding times 11 when you have that going on. Like, oh, I am a tablecloth now. Like, there is literally nothing you see at this stand that isn't me. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Zona says, oddly enough, this is why I prefer to animate it all <laughs> and hide a Gnucci. Yes, uh, I totally agree. Animation, whew, it takes even longer to animate everything, but you have full control at least. And you, you must have amazing skills at like visualizing what it's going to be in the end. Because I know for me, if I were to animate anything, I would not want to waste a single, like, what would you call it? Like a scene or whatever? Like any frame would just upset me so much if I had to cut it. So you have to go in knowing exactly what you're going to use. I'm sure you've had to cut stuff before and been like, no. <laughs> Knuti says, yeah, do, do the G. And Zona says, animation takes a long time, but it's so much quicker to just animate it for my vision. I'm so glad that you can do it quickly, or semi-quickly at least. Animation is just, uh, like I've said before, animators are close to godliness like i love animation so much and i appreciate every single moment that goes into it which it's a lot of moments <laughs> Whoop. i've actually animated a few of my illustrations made like little things move in them i actually did some corgi ones that were kind of similar to this style it was really cute they would like stamp their feet and stuff oh i love doing that but i just animated in photoshop which i'm sure is not the easiest way to do it Am I on the wrong layer? Yes, I am. Whoops. All right. Let us leaf. James, I know you're talking in there. <laughs> James says, someday she'll be an animator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> James really wants to get into animation again. Like in college, we did 2D animation classes uh, with actually a, a ex Disney animator. She is amazing. Her name is Zavu. She does traditional oil painting now, and she's just amazing at everything. Um, but animating is ooh, it's a whole other thing. Like seriously, I'm just gonna go on about how hard animating is. But um, he wants to get like a whole animation desk with the disc in it and everything and get back into like traditional 2D animation because we both agree it's probably the best way to learn everything like you have to know so many things to be an animator and to be able to successfully animate something means you know it <laughs> like you really know it so uh it's kind of a point of like this thing will make sure that you're at the top of your game if you're doing it like it's a it's a must have <laughs> At least that's the way I think about it. James can talk for himself about how much he loves it. <laughs> Ooh, a new podcast to listen to. Zona says it's like my favorite podcast on MoGraph animators. <laughs> and Studio Long says, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm sure that's how you pronounce your name, right? <laughs> uh, I've been watching your streams on YouTube. First one I've caught live. Hey, hey, welcome. <laughs> Yeah, now you're a part of it, okay? You're in the making. This is going to be on the internet forever. So, you know, unless the apocalypse happens, Studio Long is on the internet forever. 
And uh, I'm just painting raccoons, so if you got any questions or whatever you want to talk about, you just let me know. That's how we do it around here. It's loose and fast and free. And Zona says there's a lot of physics to make animation look realistic. You're telling me, man. Squash and stretch and showing weight bearing legs and all that jazz. Oh my gosh. I remember doing one drawing. It was um, an elf carrying a present, you know, that I was doing for an animation. And I was like, oh, it walks over here. And then Za redrew over it and she just literally like bent the legs and it was magically weighted. And I, some, like, I obviously I was a student. She's like this professional, super amazing animator, but it still always feels like, how long does it take for you to figure stuff like that out? It's just going to be like forever. But uh, it is super impressive when you can do stuff like that. And I feel like I'm kind of getting there in illustration. Like every once in a while I'll have this like, oh, I can do this really easily. And it used to take me a forever kind of moment. Uh, and I guess that's just the way that art goes. You just get better at it. And you don't really notice the small integers that you, you know, improve at but you just someday you're there <laughs> and you don't even know it and you still feel like a little a little babby not knowing what they're doing <laughs> yeah studio long lol <laughs> zona says there's a lot of physics oh yeah that was sorry i always like mix up where i am in the chat so i'm gonna try to get better at that <laughs> studio says I'm gonna clip that sound bite and put it on a loop on my website. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, I've got one sound bite already clipped, uh, and I believe it was uh, Justin who did that, and it was, uh, oh my gosh, the best sound bite where it was like, you have opinions, but they're wrong. <laughs> I need to go back and listen to that. Take my own advice. My opinions are wrong. <laughs> Zona says, I'm still working on walk cycles. Heck yeah, that will never stop. You could just always do walk cycles. Uh, there's not many tutorials for four-legged animals, though. Oh, really? Or flying animals. <gasps> James, you know all the references. Show all the references that you have. Um, there's one animator who does this amazing, like, eagle coming through clouds that looks amazing. It's not a tutorial, but it's just, like, inspirational. Um, but yeah, I... <laughs> I totally love that. I just want to make birds. Can I just make birds, please? You gonna pay me for birds? Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody who really needs animated birds out there. Do you have any birds? Is that why you love them? Or is it just really fun to animate them? I imagine it would be. But that's me as a non-animator. <laughs> Yeah, I need a Gaugan. That's the reference. <laughs> Zona's like, references, please. James, she does a lot of animals. Uh, Zona says, Googling <laughs> currently, right now. Uh, and I think she is based out of Ireland. I think you're right, James. Um, she is flipping amazing, especially animal stuff. She also has a really amazing horse that runs by where you're just like, what is that movement? It's so fluid. It's like better than reality fluid. Ugh. Sometimes you look at good animation and it's just like literally breathtaking. I don't know. Do you guys have any favorite animated series? Because I have a lot. <laughs> this is one of the things when uh, Lee and I started meeting at the beginning of the year, he was like, okay, so what are your favorite like books and references and stuff like that? And I'm like, honestly, my favorite stories are all animated. And he was like, okay, so what books do you like? And I'm like, Harry Potter. I want there to be an animated series of that. <laughs> Can we make that happen? <laughs> it's just so beautiful. I love animation. Zona says, I just like birds. <laughs> I want to make a series on birds of prey for the residency. Oh, that'd be so cool. I love it. Do like endangered ones too. And then they'll be like, yeah, it's good for the world. Boom. Done. <laughs> But Birds of Prey are awesome, and I, I went to a Birds of Prey show when I was a kid at the Oregon Zoo, and like seeing a California condor go right over your head with its wingspan being like seven feet or something, it was awesome. Just amazing. Um, but of course now my favorites are the little baby owls that they bring out. <laughs> They're so cute. Owls could be another one for the patterns. Owls and trowels? Owls and bowels. <laughs> Just a bunch of poop. 
I mean, this is a PG rated stream. <laughs> but whatever, we can do whatever we want. We're adults. <laughs> But um, for those who don't know, I do patterns, uh, or at least I've been doing patterns lately that have kind of some rhyming capacity. The last one I had was bun buns, and it was bunnies and like baked buns, you know, like uh, cinnamon rolls and stuff like that. And so it was bun buns, and then this one is raccoons and balloons. So, you know, just go with that. And then last time we made up, because uh, I want to draw seals, seals and windowsills. <laughs> Doesn't make sense, but you know, we came up with a pretty cool idea for it where you see seals through windows, and so you know, it's a loose connection to the windowsill, but whatever. And uh, <laughs> we're just coming up with ideas left and right here. We're a creative bunch, obviously. I feel like I'm cleaning these up a little bit too much, so I might just call it and then start doing the tick marks and see if I need to clean up anymore after this. It's just because I get lost in talking, you know, sometimes I overdo things. Okay. <laughs> you guys. Owls, cute. Oh, wow, I'm way behind. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, studio long over the garden wall. Mm. Oh, I almost lost my thing. By the way, I got an ergonomic grip for my stylus. Have you guys ever seen these? It's to just help your hand. It's supposed to keep stress off of it. It's just a big nub to hold on to. It's super easy to get used to, and I like it so far. Um, anyways, the Over the Garden Wall is one of James and I, like, we love that series so much. And just the idea of doing, like, these shorts that, if you guys haven't seen it, go watch it. It is a series of shorts that are basically, like, seven minutes long. It takes, like, an hour and a half to watch the whole thing. And it's basically just a movie. It's beautifully done. And so, like, steeped in old Americana lore kind of stuff. It's really cool. I love it so much. And... The writing's just hilarious and very thought-provoking, so it's a great one. Cartoon Network, I believe, aired that, and it was like for a, a week or two or something like that. They would air one every night. It was so cool. And then, of course, we bought it, and there are a series of uh, magazines, I would call them, or comics, I suppose, but like really small ones, of just more stories told in that world because it's totally ripe for storytelling like it's very episodic as they're going through and then the ending is very final and makes you think about it it's very awesome okay let's let's read some of this <laughs> potatoes and molasses <laughs> ba -da -da -da, something your asses i mean pg i always forget what that song says but i love it and then also like a is for the apple that he gave to me, but I found a worm inside. <laughs> it's just a great series. Anyways, uh, yeah, studio long. <laughs> uh, James says, owls, cute. Zona says, owls is one of the uh, series titles. Oh, the episodes. Okay, gotcha. I love it. I guess technically topics, but that goes under the Birds of Prey series I'm trying to get done. Heck yeah. Uh, James says, seals, rocks, water, lighthouses. <laughs> Just everything. All of it. <laughs> the beach. Put it in there. And seashells. Very on theme. Studio says, do you have the art of book? Been trying to find it online to watch. It's one of my favorite books. I love looking at the art book for Book of Life. Ooh, that one's a good one. Yeah. Uh, Zona, buy it on Amazon. It's worth the money. <laughs> I bought that one because I was in love with it. I love it. Guys, I love that you just, like, talk to each other and, like, let's swap references. Let's make a giant stockpile of just all the best things because I swear, like, that's all my art buddies do and I want it to, to reach a bunch of people. Uh, especially, like, James is the hoarder of reference. Like, he finds stuff nobody else knows about and... It's just, like, amazing. It's a really good stockpiling of stuff. I should follow you on Pinterest, James. How do you even follow a person on Pinterest? I don't know. But I should do that. Because you got the good stuff, man. The real good stuff. Yeah, I'll do that in line. Sorry, I was thinking about outlining the balloons to really defend, like, like this line right on the yellow one overlapping the blue one. I like that. But I think I'll do it in line rather than in paint. So let's jump into line. We're going to change our brush here. Going to the HB pencil. 
I'm gonna go slightly darker than this just to start out. And usually I do change the color of my lines. So uh, all you have to do that is just lock the pixels and paint over it. Easy peasy. Awesome. Zona says, I'm trying to build that on my blog eventually. I hoard so many references. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Studio Long says, James, tell us your secrets. <laughs> He's got many secrets, okay? You gotta be more, uh, what do you call it? More word that doesn't fit in my head anymore. You guys, make up the word. I just lost all my thoughts. It's fine. Oh, James says, 4K download on YouTube <laughs> using an incognito window so they don't try. I told you, he's hiding from the government. <laughs> there are a lot of secrets in that boy. Now, he's uh, very afraid because there are certain laws going into effect in the UK where they are going to possibly make, like, all copyrighted material that you use in a video, even if you completely transform it. Say you're like, uh, you know, Every Frame of Painting is a fantastic uh, YouTube channel, and they dissect how editing and uh, composition, and like, uh, like everything that makes movies great, basically, how it works. And they need to use clips from movies as examples. Now, the new law would make it so that that is illegal, <laughs> because they're using a clip from something. Uh, it would also make memes possibly illegal. Uh, things that just use material that is not original content. Um, and that would mess up a lot of YouTube. So he's trying to basically gather that content before it goes away uh, because that would be really sad, especially for the content creators who are like, where is my life's work? What the heck? Um, but we don't know if it's going to be that bad yet. It's just something to keep an eye on. I can't remember the name of the law. James, do you remember that one? Doesn't matter. I know, I miss every frame of painting too. It's so good. Ugh. Oh, James says, no, they'll block your IP if you download from YouTube, but there are so many good videos on story writing, animation, cinematography. I had to start collecting them just in case they end up being blocked by the new EU laws. Oh, man. Uh, Weight of Cinema is also good, and Lindsay Ellis. Lindsay Ellis is entertaining as heck. Uh, I feel like. Every Frame of Painting was one of those super unique ones where it just hit the exact right amount of, like, very studied and thought-provoking, but also entertaining, where it's like, I really do enjoy watching that. And some of the other ones I don't enjoy watching as much, but it's very uh, informative. And I think certain people can just hit that mark perfectly, where Every Frame of Painting was just like that, you know? I loved it. And I want it back, so can we start a peti petition? <laughs> Drawing an upside down raccoon, maybe not the smartest idea, but I do what I want. Yeah, that cutie. Look at that boy. Oh, he's so cute. This is one of my favorite parts of getting to this stage in drawing where I like, you know, you can kind of draw what's in your mind. Kind of. I mean, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but, uh, I'm satisfied enough with what I create that I can actually be like, oh, that's adorable, <laughs> which is really fun because I want to just make cute things forever. I'm listening to the new vamp, or not new, sorry. I'm listening to Vampire Weekend and I was thinking they're coming out with a new album soon, I believe. Um, but I heard that somebody was concerned about it because one of the main uh, people from the band wasn't there. So I'm kind of worried about the writing or something. I don't know enough about the band to know about that. But I'll listen to it either way. <laughs> so Anna says, now you see it helps me fill the void. Oh, now you see it. I haven't heard of that one. Oh, cool. Excited for the new Vampire Weekend. Okay, so I have a lot of uh, emotions connected to them because one of the best summers in my memory happened while I was listening to, uh, what is this, Contra? And so almost every song on that album just brings back waves of nostalgia. Like right now I'm listening to Horchata and I can just like feel sunlight hitting my skin. I love it so much. Um, but that, that actually, James, I think that was the summer or 
Yeah, it was probably summer. Then we started dating. So, good times, you know, all around. <laughs> By the way, everybody in the chat, James is my husband. So, he's sitting in the other room right now and chatting to you. <laughs> and he made an appearance on the last stream. What, what? He's famous. <laughs> Along with Anthony, my best friend, who I also have very strong memories concerning Vampire Weekend with. But we never got to see them in theater, er, theater uh, in concert. James says, Super Eyepatch Wolf is also good for analyzing animated shows. Is that the one we just watched? That was um, the genius of... Uh, not G... G... Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball. It was the genius, genius of Dragon Ball. Wow. That was almost completely brain dead. Just almost. <laughs> it's been a long day, guys. I'm sorry. Sona says, although now I'm a little annoyed at some of the songs because I was stupid and set some as a wake up alarms. No, that is the one way to just ruin music for yourself. Set it as a wake up alarm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't think I've done that, but everything I've set as a wake up alarm before, like just the, you know, things in my phone that come with it. I hate those songs with a passion. There's only one that's, like, escaped that kind of hatred, and it was uh, birds, like, chirping or something. And I'm like, okay, I can't be mad at birds. But everything else is just vitriol. James knows that. <laughs> Every time there's uh, this one on his phone that says, get up, get up, get up, get up, ah. And I literally will just be like, shut it down. It must die. Because <laughs> I just hate it. Everything associated with waking me up is just the worst. <laughs> but that's me. I'm an angry waker-upper. Definitely not a morning person. <laughs> Let's see. Although... Oh, yeah. Now... Sona says, but they always set up something you like so that you're more likely to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll always regret listening to the advice. Oh, no. <laughs> I have one called Good Morning Sunshine that's pretty obnoxious. Okay, all-time worst one, though, is the, like, alarm going off that's, like, a biohazard or something, where it's, like, ur, ur, ur. it is the worst sound I've ever heard, and I hate it so much. Like, if that is what you said to wake yourself up, like, what kind of day are you starting there? An angry one? Because for me, that would just make me murder in the morning, and that's not what I'm about. Like, don't make me do that. <sighs> I have a lot of feelings about waking up, you guys. I just wish it didn't have to happen. Could I just be, like, asleep and then awake? I just don't like the in-between. It sucks so bad. <sighs> Someday they'll eliminate that with science. I'm going to cut his ear off. That's not through anger, just because of the design. <laughs> Boom. I clipped his ear. I feel kind of guilty. But the lines are pretty cute, don't you guys think? They're like popping them into life, especially the eyes. Whenever there's that much contrast on the face, it just feels like, it's good. <laughs> that is the ultimate horrible noise. It's so true, I hate it so much. Except for, what was it? Uh, I knew somebody who had uh, Dumb and Dumber is the most annoying sound in the universe or something, like Ehh! like, oh my gosh, stop. <laughs> I'm gonna just bash your phone on the cement. <laughs> Oh, I forget who said it, but someone on YouTube was talking about the commercials that use the alarm noise and trying to understand why anyone would think it's a good idea. I really don't know. I would be interested in that video if they find anything other than just we are perplexed by humans. They're just so self-destructive. <laughs> yeah, you can boop the nose of this guy when he's all done. We'll all boop the noses. <laughs> Adorable little trash pandas. Yeah, obviously Sid was a trash dove, so I gotta do trash pandas. Clearly. <laughs> it's the residency thing, guys. It's a theme. I think I was just drawing raccoons because I was thinking of, like, blobby-shaped animals. They're so much fun to draw. Just like seals. That's one of the reasons I would love to draw them, because they're literally, like, any shape you want, and then just a little snoot, and it becomes that. 
So it's really fun to fit them into spaces like this. Uh, if you haven't seen in any of my past work, I've done some uh, animal compositions where you basically like make them fit into shapes and stuff. And like there's a page full where it's just a rectangle, but it's filled with different shapes of animals. And I love doing stuff like that. It used to be an exercise where I was just like, I need to get better at drawing animals. I'm going to look up reference and I'm going to draw them. And it turned into really fun shape design and I would highly recommend it for anyone honestly it's like just a really good exercise to do um, but the idea of drawing animals now is like the free time stuff that I love to do you know you go through waves of like what is the go-to drawing that you would make like I used to I remember in college I went through a really long phase of just wanting to draw old people because wrinkles are the best I love them so much and it just like kind of after a while I realized that like I wasn't the best at drawing wrinkles because I wasn't looking up enough reference and one day that same teacher Zaw came by and she was like what if we put the wrinkles here and like instead of just under the eyes it was like wrinkling out on the cheeks and stuff and I was just like that looks so good and you know that part of your brain kicks in sometimes where you're just like oh okay I'm not as good as I thought at this and so I went to another go-to it almost is like playing Overwatch. So guys, I've been playing Overwatch a little bit lately. Uh, last night I got to play with Anthony and my friend Corinne. It's great because she lives in California, so it's like we can actually connect through the game. Uh, but uh, when you feel like you have a good game with a character, you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm so good. Like, ooh, ooh, yeah. And then once you have a really bad game with them, you're like, ooh, maybe I should like cool off of this for a little while <laughs> and see if there's anyone else that I'm really jiving with. It's just a stupid psychological thing, but you know, it's what happens. Zona says, I like the Soon Raccoon from Brain Scoop. What the heck is that? I That sounds kind of familiar, actually. Uh, that reminds me of what my drawing teacher would say, draw in, in a trash bag, yes. Wrinkles and fat are fun to draw. They just are, they really are. Uh, we used to do the, what do you call it? The flower sack? That was like the go-to animation and drawing thing where you would just draw a flower sack and uh, turn it around in space and make it do funny things. And uh, now I feel like my animals are kind of like that, where it's like, they start out real basic, but uh, they go to a fun place. I'm trying to figure out how I want to shape break up this balloon, because I don't want to necessarily outline everything, but how do you like differentiate these limbs? Oh, you know what I should do is kind of what I'm doing over here and have some overlap colors where the balloon parts overlap each other. That would be fun. So let's cool off of the lines for a second and go back to the paint. Now I'm going to pixel lock this layer and go back to the bristle bomb. Bristle burn. And let's get some variations of this yellow, maybe. Actually, here. Just use the yellow and slightly run it over these and then select those colors. That's fun. Shows a little bit of overlap. Probably, I don't know what I'll do. Maybe for the far limb, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for showing them it's way over there. Almost white. And then over here. Sorry, it's a little awkward because it's offset, but that's the same thing. You'll see when I apply the pattern to a big space. The Brain Scoop is was an educational series about behind the scenes of museums. Ooh, they had a raccoon as the mascot. That's awesome. Oh, man. I love those kind of old shows of, like, just education. I feel like, I don't know about the educational programming these days, but I guess I'm not a kid anymore, so I don't really see it as often, which is sad. <laughs> Need more educational content. Um, there was one video that I just remembered the other day that I watched almost religiously as a child, and it was this tour around the world of a bunch of animals, and there was a globe that was the like mascot or you know person who was showing you around the world. It was an animated globe, and it was awesome, and I really want to see that again. So I gotta like look through my parents' VHSs, which of course they still have. And uh, find out what that was and see if there's anything on YouTube. Because YouTube is the future, apparently. We're living in the future now, people. 
It's on YouTube, so you can watch it all. Oh, awesome. The brain scoop. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> uh, he had an Australian accent. Okay, what was it called? <laughs> we got to find this out. Search the brains of the internet. The brain scoop. The brain scoop. I like that, but it also makes me think of like scooping out a brain like ice cream. It's a little creepy, but... Is that a bad thing? I don't know. Ice cream's delicious, so. Oh, nice. Thank you, Zona, for putting the link in the chat. Now we can all watch along. Should we have a watching party one of these days of just, like, something? This happened. <gasps> I started it. <laughs> no way, the ice cream idea is what they did. <laughs> That's great. Not creepy at all. No, I think I I imagine it even creepier because I drew this um, <laughs> this cartoon of Anthony in high school. He loves ice cream so much, or at least he did before he was kind of lactose intolerant, I guess. Um, and so I drew him like with his stomach all ripped open, and he was eating ice cream out of his stomach and putting it back in his mouth. And it was gross, but you know it was like not realistic at all because it was me in high school drawing graphite. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that, that's the memory that that brought up for me. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> but that was me and Anthony in high school. Woohoo. Okay. That's okay for now. We'll see what I think later. I'm going to also hit this guy with that kind of same idea. Overlapping areas. And then actual coloring within the balloon. I want to give them some stripies. It's not too offensive of a color, right? <laughs> the host's favorite tool is a brain scoop. And in one of the first episodes, she finds brain still on it. Good stuff. Quality entertainment. 10 out of 10. Uh, <laughs> that nasty. <laughs> but hey, that's, that's something, you know? Kids probably love it. Also gonna hit these ears. Cute! Not too bad, not too bad at all. Quite, quite, yes. I'm going to hop back into line. We're going to do a real quick pass on these guys. And then we're going to, I think, plop it onto the bigger one and see how we're feeling. And again, if you're new here, we have a bigger pattern template that I put this on so that you can see it tiled. Uh, so this is not the final product. This is the smaller version of this. Although I do have it at a pretty big size. Let's check it out here. So not pixels, let's do inches. So yeah, nine by nine, 300 DPI. So fairly large for uh, any piece. And then if it's tiled over, like I do it at a high DPI and resolution because um, if say they wanted it on something really big, I don't want it to be like way too res for that. Although luckily with this style, if I were to have to replicate this, it would probably only take like two hours maybe if I had to like repaint it all together. The hard part is the design, not the execution. I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> really wild animals! Oh, I love that one! Really wild animals. Oh, that brings so many memories back. I watched that, like, ad nauseum as a kid. It was so good. And you know, like, I'm sure we were all pretty obsessed with animals as kids, and I was... Just, I love them. I wanted to be a zookeeper. That was like one of my first things that I uh, ever wanted to do with my life. And I considered heavily being a vet until I realized I am way too squeamish to be in anything medical. Like I see blood and I am literally one of those people who will faint. So not meant for, uh, you know, helping people or animals or anyone. <laughs> I just, I don't help, sorry. <laughs> Horrible person here. Just making art selfishly. But I guess it's, you know, a good thing to know about yourself going into an ER. 
Sorry, James, if you ever need surgery, I'll just be like, sorry, have fun. No, I'll be there for him, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, Studio Long. We had the same childhood, apparently. <laughs> Watched on repeat as a kid. Sona says, that opener is on point. I was obsessed with Neopets and Dragons. <laughs> Studio Long. We were the same child. <laughs> Heck yeah. Woke up at 6 a.m. every day and watched the Boom of Foo. Oh, love. That was, Ringtailed Lemur was one of my favorite animals as a kid as well. Uh, on PBS, on the quietest setting, so I wouldn't wake up my parents. That's so great. Uh, yeah, that's, that's how childhood goes. Just like, do things in secret, have fun in secret so that your parents don't know. <laughs> oh man. There are so many shows that I remember, but I don't remember watching TV all that much. Is that weird? Like, I don't know. It just, it felt like I had a very outdoorsy childhood, but now that I talk to, you know, people our age, like, James and I both remember so many shows, and yet I still remember, like, twice as many, like, just other facts about television and stuff as we were growing up in the 90s, and it was, whew, there's a lot to consume out there, man. <laughs> there's so much stuff. Sorry, I'm trying to quickly bang this out so that we can uh, see it on the big one. Especially these ones that go off the page, I know they're not going to line up perfectly yet. Um, actually, that's probably something I should do before putting it on the big one is just offset it again and see how it's all lining up. Probably fix some things before we go to the big one. Cute little schnoz. Adorable bull. Okay, where is that tail? Okay, cool. Again, I might darken these lines in the future. We'll see what looks good on the big one because it's really hard to tell when you're this close up to it. Everything's hard to tell when you're close up. That's why I always say, like, zoom out and take a step away from your work if you're editing it. Listening to Grimes right now. If you don't know Grimes, check her out. She is super good. So ethereal and lovely. All right, I think this guy just needs some fur ticks. He has a leg there, I can't remember. Yeah, I think his leg comes out. And then... And an eyeball would kind of help, I think. There we go. Uh, then this guy is the only dude who needs some info in his face -o. Maybe just like, whoop. Is that cute? I mean, these guys don't really have fur, so I'm wondering if, like, some kind of mark on them would make them feel more balloony. What the hay is going on over here? Okay. Schnoz. Probably do just little differentiating lines just to see. We'll see. We'll see what it looks like and if we like it. Gotta have sound effects, obviously. Okay, woo, I did it guys, let's talk. <laughs> um, 
My friend group literally did LARPing without knowing what it was until sixth grade. Heck yeah. <laughs> we drew all of our characters and had timelines that built off of each other. Oh my gosh. Your childhood was a strange but awesome one, it sounds like. That's like uh, training for hardcore d and I feel like. <laughs> uh, I sometimes just flip the canvas or rotate it upside down. Yeah, totally. Helps me look at it differently. Uh, that is a very good, very good one. Especially flipping if you're working on characters or something. Like seeing them backwards, I always skew my stuff to the top right corner for some reason. So that always just points it out immediately. Like, Phew, okay, whoa, something's off. Like a lot. <laughs> Uh, that shiny light usually gives the look of a balloon. Uh, IDK, if that's what you're going for. Totally. Yeah, a shiny light, I think, would be a really good one uh, to show off the balloons, but I have to execute it in a way that kind of fits with this style. So we'll see what works. Um, and it's definitely not done or anything. I just am playing around with ideas right now. But let's offset it. We have three layers, so I'm going to offset each of them. It's going to look kind of crazy as I do that. Um, I'm also actually, oh, here, let's offset all these layers because I want the sketch one underneath as well. I'm still working with that. So uh, we've got six layers, or no, five. We're not going to do the background. So just hold on for a sec. We're going to go to filter, other, offset. And then once we offset one, that's the sketch one, um, we can go to the top or I could just do alt control F. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go to the next one, alt control F. That's an awkward one. Okay. Alt control F. Did it do it? Oh no, it's got both of them. Sorry, I messed it up. <laughs> Alright, we did the first two. Alt control F. Alt control F. Alt control F. Boom! We got it, guys. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And now you can see everything's uh, different spacing and everything. Uh, hopefully, that helps us out a little bit with this. So cute. Okay, this one I'm going to. This is the line, <laughs> the line, literally the line. Uh, this one has the most choppy bits you can see, where it just like leaves off awkwardly. And I'm definitely gonna redraw it because it's it's not as nuanced as I want the line to look. So um, we might bring up the bun bun one to see that as a reference as well. But this is the part where he wants to be biting this, so I wanted to erase that a little bit. Okay, let's join up some of these lines. Go back to the, oh wait, we have the HB. Is that the same color? I don't know. So this is kind of the look I will go for, like thick and thin in the line when I'm drawing it out finally. Just gotta remember that the plant lines are on this too. listening to the shins right now. Oh, and the power is long, low on the laptop, so I'm going to have to plug it in. So good at that. Nice. <laughs> so, I like that. All right. Um, not loving this guy yet, but you know, We'll give him some time. I'm gonna just edit a few little things about him because he looks super different from the uh, sketch that we have of him just because it went off the side and so it was hard to kind of judge that. with a little pattern on him. Not loving it yet, but we'll figure it out, don't worry. The lines are going through this guy's head. Let's save him from a grizzly death. And he's also missing a little ear action. I think I missed a few of their ears, so let's look around. Aha! I found you! Aha, found another ear. It's like a Where's Waldo. Okay, ready to see it big time? Big time, big time? Let's do it. 
saving, of course, because why not? Gonna duplicate this, smash it down. I promised myself I would make an action before doing this again with you guys. So sorry I didn't, because, you know, just big time Dumbo here. <laughs> uh, define pattern, blah, blah, blah. Go into the big one. Here's the old version. Let's put a new layer down, edit fill, make sure it's pattern, make sure it's the newest one. A uh, boop. Ooh, yeah. All right, I'll zoom in a bit, get juicy with it. Oh, yeah. I'm loving it. <laughs> what do you guys think? I think we need lines on the bugs and the um, flowers and stuff. And we should have some lines on the balloon. I don't think they should be completely lineless, but we'll see what we like for them. Zona says, I just keep, or I just use keyboard shortcuts. Sometimes actions take longer than I want them to. Totally. I think that, uh, oh, she loves the coal rows. I'm going to call them coal rows from now on. These coal rows are really working well. I love them. <laughs> I actually think that the balloon boy right here is just not reading at all to me. I might make him blue. This guy's okay. Maybe I'll make them the light blue that this is, like work with those really light lights. But the yellow for some reason is just throwing me off, like it doesn't read super well. I like it as the full balloons because they're just like one basic shape, but then having nuance within it, it feels kind of too high contrast and weird. Uh, I feel like the blue shadow might bring him out more. The blue shadow. Oh, <laughs> Studio Long says 10 out of 10 <laughs> on those coal rows. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, the blue shadow might bring him out a bit more. Blue shadow. Sorry, I'm just taking a look for a second, making sure that that's all I want to change right now. I'm loving the plants though. I think we nailed that. So the flowers and the bugs need to be figured out on that layer. I don't really need to do much with the berries. Um, let's bust out the bun buns just to see what, if I did anything with the berries. Let's look inside my PC. Documents. Do do. Do do do. Patterns. Bun buns. So what was I looking at? Oh, the berries. Yeah, I didn't do anything on the berries. They have no lines or anything. So I think like as long as we're going kind of off of this, it's not that I have to do hard and fast or anything. I think that um, we should just keep it loose. I keep tightening up too much. And now my PC says I need to restart my computer. Ignore that. <laughs> it doesn't actually need to restart. It lies to itself and me. Okay, deselect. Like blue reflective light. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, totally. So, um, I'm going to do a uh, clipped layer mask over the um, the balloons and raccoon layer so that I can play on them. Oh, I have to plug in my computer real quick. One second. The other computer, the um, laptop. I have to find the right charger because I have so many. Oh, technology. Boop. This is one thing with the residency, okay? They gave me a laptop and an iPad to borrow, and now I have so many more chargers and just pieces of technology that I did not have before. And it's a lot. Like, honestly, it's too much for my desk to even fit. It's always a juggling game. And I have a huge desk thanks to Anthony. His uh, office was actually giving away these giant like L-shaped desks. This actually goes all the way this way and all the way this way. Like all this space, it's amazing. Um, I keep this area clean for you guys. Over here it's a mess. <laughs> That's for your benefit. <laughs> um, but he got us this for free because they were just getting rid of them at the office. How cool is that? It's amazing. <laughs> Organize those chargers, hey. Hey, organize your life. <laughs> no, I do want to be organized, but then I always end up using everything and then 
using all the charges. Like, they're all just out because I just used them, and I probably will in a few hours. So, I, I don't know. I get organized, and then I get unorganized real fast. <laughs> Marie Kondo that. I hang mine behind me on a rake. What? <laughs> Never heard of such a thing. Wow. I have a drawer for them, and I would love to have some kind of Marie Kondo thing where it's all really organized, but I feel like I'm borrowing them for now. It's in April that the residency is up, so I will be giving back the chargers and the computer tech, so that stuff will be gone. I'm also uh, borrowing a Mobile Studio Pro from Wacom, and that will also go back to them, so soon enough I won't have that many chargers. The one thing, though, that I really, really need to organize is the wires behind this computer setup, okay? I'm going to be real with you guys. Check this out. Look at those things. They, uh, uh, they're not organized. That's just wire massacre. Like, that's, that's bad. <laughs> I don't want it to be like that, but it's uh, something that, like, it takes knowing how to wire organize and I have been looking stuff up lately about it because I want to get better at that um I think I just need some of those like velcro things like a few pieces of equipment that I'm missing that will make it actually organized but it is what it is life is progress so <laughs> hey hey studio what, you judging there you judging me how dare you <laughs> Uh, Zona, it's like an old rake head that's all rusted. Ooh, got that rustic chic going on. It hangs up and is perfect for hanging things like chargers on it. it. Sounds like that would be really cool. As long as it doesn't have like a heavy block on the end of it. Like the Mac chargers are really heavy. Uh, and we've had wires like come untangled because of that. Like it gets pulled too much. We actually learned how to do wired splicing just to fix an $80 charger. Um, saving money. <laughs> Zona says, go to the container store. They have tons of organizers and use gear ties. Gear ties. Is that what I should use for that? You guys are just all sorts of information tonight. I love it. Boom. Uh, yes, I would love to go to the container store and buy everything. Uh, I think that will be one of the next things that we do. Again, James and I are uh, probably going to move in May, and so that could be one of those things where, you know, like you go to the container store and reorganize your life. That would be really nice. <laughs> All right, so the blue makes it blend in way too much with the background. So I'm going to go for other things. Maybe if I make it real dark, that like spectral light of, uh, like if I hit it with a little bit of light, it'll look really shiny and transparent. Let's see. Little schnoz, little schnoz. What I learned when working on video games is one of the surefire ways to make something looks translucent uh, is you use a super saturated, like imagine, here, hey, let's do a quick little demo to say what I mean, because I love doing demos. Okay, so you've got, let's do an eye color. So this is an iris, and then you have the pupil, easy, whoa, then you would uh, have the shadow of uh, the eyelid casting a shadow onto the eye. So you would go a little bit darker, and whenever you go darker, I always like to go more saturated. So there's the shadow on top. Whoop. Then you go for the light that passes through it, and it's super saturated and very light. You can go more saturated than that. Maybe like. And then you have the spectral light happening, whether it's warm or cool. I'm going to go with warm. And you would hit it like the highest point of contrast. And then it looks like this light is hitting this and being really shiny bounced off of it. And then over here it passes through and it picks up the color of the eye and it's so cool. And you're just like, oh yeah, baby, oh yeah. And then you just draw the rest of the eye and you're like, ooh. Wow, look at those eyelashes, girl. Ooh, yeah. And then you get a nose in there and you're just like, hey. And then they're winking at you. It's beautiful, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but uh, that was all just from video games. Like, I guess this would go darker. This is my thing. Okay, so uh, especially if the light is warmer, I would go cooler with the shadow. Anyways, uh, I almost never stick with the stuff that I put down first. I always do something like to edit the color and stuff like that. I'm not a one and done kind of person. Still feel like this could go darker. 
I, sh this is just a quick tip thing. Okay, there you go. Boom. Well, and then the sclera is important, you know, but sclera has to have the shadow on it too. Oh, yeah. All right, should we paint the rest of the face? <laughs> yeah, Picasso, like, it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> you said, not judging, or judging, but jealous that I do not have that many chords. Totally understandable. This is the one time in my life that I'll have this many chords. Never again. <laughs> uh Oh my gosh. What about red and green and reflecting on it? Oh. <laughs> Show us the tips. Whoosh, Picasso. Oh my gosh, you guys. We lost like two watchers because of that. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. Uh, well, let's continue. <laughs> uh, with this guy, I'm trying to think of like that kind of idea. If there's some kind of like translucency on the other side of him where... It's like spectral light on one side, and we've got a little bit of uh, translucency going through it. So you see like color on the other side. <laughs> James says, I'm still here. <laughs> Liar, you left so long ago. <laughs> no, I don't do this for the watchers, okay? I do it for the content, you guys. You guys are what it's all about. We're making memories. We're coming up with old shows to watch. We're figuring out how to untangle my life. <laughs> it's all I ever needed. Didn't even know it, but you know, here you are fixing me. <laughs> how can I help you? I want to, I want to give back. What are your problems in your life? I'll fix them. You need advice? I say, uh, you need a different kind of soap. It's causing you eczema. I'm sorry, but you should just buy gentler soap. It's a fact. <laughs> Zona says, you do it for you. Do it for you. <laughs> I do it for me. I should just have a mirror right here and talk to myself the whole time. <laughs> you know I would. You totally know I would because, oh my gosh. <laughs> There's a whole running gag between me and uh, Anthony that I laugh at myself in the mirror. Uh, <laughs> if I see myself and like I start talking to myself or anything like that, I will have a conversation. I will make jokes with myself. It's... It's a thing. I'm sure there's psychologically some reason for that, but uh, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> That's a dark path. All right. And again, this is on a clipping mayor, clipping mask layer. Uh, so at any time we can just be like, no, I don't like it. <laughs> Studio Long says, untangle my life 2019. Oh, sorry. Hashtag. Untangle my life. 2018, or 2019. What year is it? Where am I? <laughs> That's how tangled I am. Not tangled as in cute Rapunzel, but tangled as in Marie Kondo. Please save me. <laughs> uh, no, so many of my friends have started doing the like uh, Cone Marie method, right? That's what it's called. And I'm like super proud of them because they are making huge changes in their life and everything. Uh, but it's one of those things where I'm like, is that just cleaning or is it like giving yourself the time to clean? I watched the whole show. I know the method and everything. Um, but I wonder sometimes if those people really need somebody to come in and tell them the method or they just need an excuse to get it done. And it's probably just an excuse thing. Like that's not a problem. I don't shame them for that. But, you know, maybe Studio Long does, because obviously they're into shaming people. How dare you? <laughs> Is it too much? Am I doing too much? Studio Long! Mary Poppins does it. You can too! It's right. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, tangled. <laughs> Con Marie, yes. I'm kind of doing it. Oh, kind of doing it. Can you just, like, halfway? Like, take everything out and then just leave it. That's halfway doing it. Right? Perfect. <laughs> yeah I feel that I, I could totally do it it's um I think the trip up which a lot of artists are posting about on Twitter is the 30 book thing uh, she says that you shouldn't have more than 30 books and like I could just hear James screaming from that being like no you're not taking my books away <laughs> he is an absolute connoisseur of art books so 
That is the one thing that we have probably way too many of, but I am also super proud of. I love them. And we also have a very much growing uh, collection of children's books, which I am also even more proud of. So deal with that. Marie Kondo. No, I know she's not doing it to be contrary and whatever is most important to you in your life, that's what you should keep around as long as it sparks joy. But uh, I do feel like there it's got to be individual you know like everybody has their measure of what they would need to get rid of and what they don't but oh my gosh the episode okay so if you guys have watched the show it gets real emotional because there was this one episode where the woman's uh husband had died and she keeps saying like i'm strong i can do this and stuff like that and it's like yeah you're strong but like you're you're going through something it doesn't matter how strong you are that is a uh, really really hard thing to do and I was just bawling watching that episode because she was bawling doing it I mean it was just too much like getting rid of your loved one's clothes like I don't know how I would do that uh James if you die while I'm still alive I'm keeping all your stuff I think we've already talked about this but it's mine <laughs> I don't care if you're not around to wear it I'm wearing it <laughs> I'm gonna keep it forever and then I'll have to con Marie my life Right? Con Marie? Is that what it was? Yeah, Con Marie. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh man, Zona, I think somebody from my school is the director of Tangled. Awesome. <laughs> oh, and you have probably 150 books. Oh, wow. Okay, good job. Uh, James, how many do we have? You gotta tune in here and tell me because I have no idea. Uh, Zona, <laughs> I considered being a book cover designer, so that makes a lot of sense. And booktube is one of my favorite things ever. I will spend hours figuring out my TBR just because I want to. <laughs> I love it. Studio Long says, oh yeah, he had died fairly recently too. That one was tough. Oh my gosh, so tough. Ugh. I, I don't know about timing with like some significant other passing away, but like, I don't know if I could ever do it, honestly. But she was really good at it, like, okay, I'm going to get rid of this stuff, and it's going to be cleansing instead of, you know, traumatic, and she did it. I mean, she actually got it done, which is really a big, big push for uh, mental health, too, I think. <laughs> Just being okay. Uh, Zona says, I attempted booktube at one point. Yeah, that episode was rough, yeah. Uh, Nathan Greno. Oh, what are you trying to... Uh, James, how many art books do we have? That was the question. Because I think it's kind of an absurd number. But uh, I also added to it over Christmas. I gave him the art of uh, Princess Mononoke. Which does have, I have to say, some of the most beautiful backgrounds in any Ghibli movie. Which is saying something. Like, they are all breathtaking, obviously. But uh, that one has something special going on. Not my favorite content wise. I'm not into as much of the like actual heads coming off and like the the animal stuff just makes me want to cry. But uh, it's a beautiful movie and obviously very very well done. I just rather watch Ponyo. I'm sorry. <laughs> and everybody has their own opinions about Ghibli movies, but we all know they're amazing. <laughs> if you ever hear somebody question that, then send them here and I will talk to them. And if any of you haven't seen them, I mean, do it now. Get off the stream. Do it. <laughs> Kyle Webster was uh, posting Spider-Mans that he was drawing, and I was like, oh my gosh, that new movie was amazing. And he was like, oh yeah, I haven't seen it yet. And I'm like, what do I, what do I have to do? Buy you tickets? Like, go now. <laughs> there is no excuse. Get out there and do the thing. Because seriously, that movie is so freaking good. Gosh, yes. Uh, James says, oh gosh, after getting rid of a bunch, I think we we're in the 70s. <laughs> Zona says, collectively, the entire house probably has over a thousand, but my personal collection is at least 150. Wow. I mean, I'm impressed. I really like that, but you know, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hopefully they're all really good books. Uh, James says, Zona, you really like books. <laughs> yes, yes, she does. 
Uh, yes, I really like books. I really, really love books. One of my favorite places in the world is the Strand Bookstore. Ooh, is that like a, a small bookstore in your local area? Because that is awesome. <laughs> Uh, we have Powell's here, so I do feel like even if I'm going there, it's local, right? But I do want to support local ones as much as possible. I've been seeing a lot about that lately, that, like, you know, Amazon makes it hard for them to make it, so want to want to support. I had a friend who uh, worked, well, he actually made uh, an art gallery slash uh, coffee shop. That thing, like, it's so hard to do that kind of thing. Like, starting your own shop is no small feat, and it doesn't matter how popular you are, it's always going to be hard. It's pretty crazy, the work involved. Oh, it's an NYC! The one in Boulder I, I love is the Boulder Bookstore. Oh, nice. Hey, James, we're going to New York in February. You want to go check out the Strand Bookstore? Maybe I could uh, tell Julia to come with me. That'd be really awesome. Um, we're looking for places and things to do in uh, New York City. We'll be in Manhattan, so if anything uh, is local to that, I want to go do it. And James is coming, and Anthony's coming, and a few of our other friends. It's going to be a whole thing. Oh, and the one in Ohio is the book loft. You know every store. That is so cool. <laughs> yes, you should go there. Uh, the book loft is fun because it's a full apartment to get lost in. That is so cool. Okay, so future goals. If we ever own a bookstore, we're just going to like make it into not only like four books, but like an experience. It's going to be Hogwarts Library or like uh, Secret Garden, but for books. <laughs> He's so cool. All right, guys, we need to reassess here where we're at and what needs to be worked on. So main problem is transparency of balloons. What do you guys think of the new balloon technique? Is it too rendered? Is it too one thing or another? I'm not sure. I think I'd also have to see it zoomed out. So I might work on the other balloons for now and just see how I feel after that. Go back to the line layer and get some lines going. And James, if at any point you feel like you really need to step in here and tell me what to do on this thing, then you just come out of your hiding room and then we can talk. It's my way of secretly getting him on the stream. Again. <laughs> I might use yellow. Would that be too much? Let's just try it on out. Again, we're creating just endless Venn diagrams. Ooh, the last bookstore is fun too. Oh, I want to go to everywhere in LA. After I left LA for uh, the last SB SCBWI in the summer, I start hearing about all these cool places to go in LA. I mean, not that I had the time to go, but still, I really want to go to places and like check them out. And this is not meant to stay here. I feel like a little red in the balloon reflecting would make it feel more a part of the environment. And you love bookstores. Oh, we all know that you love bookstores now. <laughs> and this one in this state, and this one in this state. You have to have, like, your favorite in every single state. That would be the perfect completion of just, like, I know all of the states have the best bookstores. <laughs> I love it. It would be really cool if bookstores were experiences so that you could really feel like, uh... You know, oh, I, I went and went into the Strand or something like that. Maybe there is an underbelly that does that, but I've never heard of them. Maybe Zona knows more about it than I do. 
picking up books and living in them is my favorite. That is so cool. I need to, like, start reading actively again. I was on a really good track, like, a few months ago of reading every night before bed, and I feel like I need to just, like, get back into that. So, uh-oh. Let us add a little bit of red. I'm gonna do it with a clipping mask just to keep it safe. Now I'm gonna try to play off where it is nearest and see if that works. That's kind of cool. It's all brush strokey. I'm just kind of throwing it around where I can. <laughs> I hung out at Book Soup when I was in LA. I have copies of Harry Potter that I got when I was in Australia. So wheat. Oh man. Looking at all the different covers for Harry Potter in all the different countries is like insane how many there are and how different they look. Like some of them are like, oh man, the artwork, it's gorgeous. And then other ones are like, what is happening there? It's kind of crazy. But. I love them all for their own reasons, you know. Um, book soup. What is that? Book soup in LA. Sounds delicious. Just eating pages. Wow. <laughs> all right, let's zoom out here. And just see what the red brings to the table. What do you guys think? I like it. I like the spreading around of the red. Definitely does make it feel a little bit more uniform. Um, we can play with the method of which we do it. Maybe it'll be red line more than red paint, but we'll just see as we go along. I like it though. Good call, Zona. Good call. <laughs> I feel, or I still need to uh, make friends with an architect. I want a house that feels like the TARDIS with lots of bookshelves and secret rooms that I have to solve puzzles to find them. Oh, girl. Yes, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we'll see if that uh, dream ever comes true. Yes, I love the red shininess. Yes, okay, awesome. Uh, oh my gosh, yes. A secret rooms in houses are like a must. Don't you feel like? Like that's just something that you gotta have. Gotta. So now we all know we're all gonna have secret rooms and so we could go to each other's houses and try to find them. <laughs> Now, I do uh, watch a lot of like home improvement shows too and seeing some people there was this graphic designer on one of the shows on Netflix and she designed her own house and it was like flawless like she used every single space perfectly and it was beautiful and I'm just like wait people can do that can I design my own home can I start making secret rooms right now because I'm kind of always designing it in my head but uh, yeah that's just the the way I do it I don't know how other people do it <laughs> Maybe I'm just a little crazy. What if I gave the flowers a red center as well? Is that too much red? Clipping masks, because we don't want to be permanent on anything. Clipping masks, they make everything clear, so use them liberally. Yeah. I know what I'm gonna do, yeah, but I'm not sure if I wanna keep it yet. So I'm gonna use a clipping mask right now. Cause that's a young tree. It's an original song, everybody. You're welcome. <laughs> like or that's like how Aaron Draplin designed his studio space. Really? Like, he just, like, straight up said, like, here's the house I want or studio space that I want. Somebody please build it for me. Dream. Ugh, so cool. <laughs> Arizona, uh, I think Anna's singing should be its own live stream. Does that mean it should be separate from this one? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> like, let's, let's keep that out of this one. Let's keep it separate <laughs> I agree let's let's not sing it's fine I mean you guys can sing obviously no one's stopping you 
I would love a stream where you guys could all just like talk, like instead of typing, just talk it out. Maybe I should have some kind of program that set, uh, like has the words that come out where it's like the computer voice, you know, it's like, I think Anna singing should be its own live stream, you know, that kind of thing. And then I wouldn't have to read. It'd be great. It's the big hiccup in this whole plan. Just reading. Oh no, but we love books. Uh, <laughs> it all falls apart. All right, real quack. I am going to add some liney boys to these buggins. Nothing can be its word. It has to be something annoying. Buggins. <laughs> Sorry, it's my way. Tis my way, Jack Sparrow. My music never picked up again, I forgot. <laughs> Studio long. Ha, you could assign everyone their own computer voice. That would be amazing. Could you guys like pick your own voices too? Because then it would be like the best. <laughs> I want to be a British man today. Hmm, can I be an Irish lady? Or have like that deep uh, ransom voice where it's like, deliver the package. <laughs> Wow, I really love those colors. <laughs> Wait, what the, so it was like coal rose? Those coal rose are wonderful. <laughs> Best stream ever would watch. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> you say that now. <laughs> Get post-apocalyptic real fast. I don't know how, but it would. One of my favorite things about drawing bugs lately is having their little legs drag behind them when they're flying. I'm like, wee! Because in my mind they're going, wee! Okay, one more. Who cares how many legs a bugs have, right? A bugs have? That's gonna be my new movie instead of a bugs life. A bugs have. I think that's all of them, right? Yeah. Let's see it big, man. Let's let's get that payoff. First save. We're gonna duplicate you. We're gonna smash it on down. We're gonna do some defining of the pattern. Like the silence of the lambs, the defining of the pattern. New layout. Edit. Fill. Boom! What? I actually like that a lot better. Having them dark rather than yellow makes it feel better overall to me. Also, the yellow, check it out, or I mean the red. <laughs> colors, I know colors, I'm an artist. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Zona says, love it. <laughs> so glad. It's all for you, Zona. I'm gonna give this to you after I'm done. One thing. This leaf is too close to this balloon. Don't they know they have to be separate? <laughs> uh, I'm also gonna do, I think, some yellow lines on the blue balloons. Maybe some blue lines on the yellow balloons. And I think I'm gonna lighten this red patch just a tad bit. But we're getting really finicky, which means we're getting really close, which is awesome. Guys, this is coming together. I'm so proud of us, all of us together. <laughs> balloon guy is standing out a lot more now that he's darker is it too much Let's see. Hmm. we can throw a little bit of a levels on there and see if a lighter version is okay let's do that Boop. don't need you collapse layer get out of my life so, select and levels. Ooh. How close can we go before we go too far? Hmm. I'm also gonna throw a little bit of a hue sat layer on there just to see. Mm. 
making them slightly greener. Ah, always gotta go too far just to see what too far is. Once again, what do you think? They are kind of close together to be that like differently colored, so I might have to figure that out. Yeah, before it was hard to see him. Totally understand. Hmm, I'm torn because I kind of like, okay, this is what I should be looking at. No, it's not bad. I think it's fine. At least for now. We'll figure it out though. There are bigger issues. Bigger fish to fry. Ooh, fish. Fish dish. Could do dishes with fishes on them. <laughs> Always looking for that next idea, guys. Gotta be on our toes. Calm that down just a tiny bit. Make it a little bit smaller of a mark. And then, okay, like three more steps until we're done. So I'm gonna go to the HB pencil again and throw around some of these yellows. I'm gonna try to keep it really fast and loose so that it doesn't feel too um, stiff. I'm trying to keep it bubbly and fun. It's all a state of mind, guys. We have to put our goodwill into these lines and just think happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Oh, they're so happy. Very happy. It reminds me of something. Oh, all real monsters. <laughs> this is kind of a weird thing to have it remind me of, but it does. Ooh, I like the yellow lines on this one, though, to like show those forms, but not show them super harshly. What do you guys think? I'm always gonna ask what you think, but you know, I'm gonna do what I think in the end. <laughs> it's basically like the quote before. <laughs> you can have your opinions, but they'll be wrong. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot more. I'm gonna do just a few tick marks, but not a ton on this guy. I'm gonna have to fix his eye too. There are still little issues, like uh, things that got cut off when it was offset. I'm still gonna go around and fix. Okay, let's see here. Still painting an up <laughs> upside down raccoon. As you do. The Wreck It Ralph soundtrack is playing in my ear, so I feel very hopeful. It's a good one. I like that soundtrack a lot. Oh, give him little toes. Little claws for the little boy. Scratch, scratch. I still love this guy so much. He's so cute. He might need a little more buoyant of a belly. Just to round out that curve a little bit. Cute! What else? What else was I thinking of doing? Back on uh, Vampire Weekend now, but it is giving up the gun. Classic. Hmm. Trying to figure out if I like the blue on the yellow. Not yet. Maybe that blue. Yeah, it's 
not too harsh. Hey everybody, what's up? <laughs> it's Tristan, he's back. A webcam, this pattern looks cute. <laughs> A webcam, are you judging my webcaminess? I mean, look at me, I'm glowing. It's awesome. <laughs> Diane Young is my favorite vampire weekend song. Oh my gosh, if Diane Young won't change your mind, then baby, 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 it's forever. Right? Perfect, exactly the words they used. They're such good songwriters and I am such a good memorizer. <laughs> wow, I just noticed that this leaf is totally cut off. Let's revisit the leaf layer real quick. Where are you at, leaf layer? There you are, I found you. You tried to hide, but you know hide. Okay. Now we're looking for errors. Like that, that is a big fat error. It's because it was on an edge, as you guys have seen. Tristan, we are trying to finish up these raccoon boys tonight. And so, isn't that exciting? I mean, we're actually finishing something on the stream. What? Never thought that would happen. Okay. Let's see here. Let us leaf. Here are some errors. Boom. You should just like look along the edge. I guess that's a good way to see it. Just like zoop. We'll have to fix the liney layer. But that ain't no big deal. Cool, cool. Looking good. Oh, there was that one that was too close to the balloon. Uncomfortably close. Get out of here. Knock it back. Knock it right back. Alrighty. Yeah, cool. We're looking good, guys. Let us do a liney bit right here. Don't know what color that is, so I'm just going to try to select something. It's not dark enough. Boom. Mm, boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Now the question is, do we want lines on the leaves themselves? That question is up to you guys. I I care not. <laughs> we could have some of them like that. We could have none of them like that. We could make all these lines gold. Oh, that's just crazy. If the background was darker, maybe. I love making gold lines on plants. It's just so fun. Lost that dark color again. Whoops. But again, we're not going for super loose on this, so keeping it, or I mean, we're not going for super tight on this, so keeping it loose is good. Even if it's a little bit messy, it makes it feel more uh, handmade sometimes, as long as it's not lazy. I'm just going through and correcting a few of these lines that made me feel a little uneasy. You know when you're looking at pieces and you're just like, that one thing. It would be so much better if they just fix that one thing. I look at my pieces all the time and think that. So it's uh, kind of important to me that I nail it at least enough to where I'm comfortable looking at it. Where I'm like seeing it and thinking, that's pleasing to the eye. Oh, no, it's dragging it, if you guys have ever heard them. The album album is fixing to thrill, and the song is You're a Disaster. But not you guys. You guys are treasures. What song would best describe you? <gasps> what song would best describe you, you guys? Tell me. I think, oh gosh, what would mine be? It's a good question. Hmm, I'll have to think on that. 
Because it's not like what song describes you perfectly or anything like that. It's like what are you? I feel like I'm almost Yellow Submarine. Almost. Like just weird. And like for some reason it got kind of like popular but it's not necessarily like the best song that they ever put out. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> flowers. A few lines on the flowers, just a few. Gotta see it on a few of them to really judge. Guys, I'm so glad that my style right now is super fast. <laughs> Makes everything so much easier. I mean, I love painting things for hours where it's like, oh man, get that lighting just right or whatever, but that's what I used to do a lot of. And now it's just really nice to know that I can like, if I need to get it done in an hour, I can. It's a wonderful freedom. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of dig that. Adds a little bit more busyness to the pattern, which I don't mind. Doop, 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 doop. Cool. Oh, I think over here a little bit. <laughs> we'll pretend like it connects, it won't, but you know. Found a berry that was green. Coolio. Let us see. I think I'm gonna just nuance this line a little bit and then we can see it on the dealio and see if we like it. The dealio, I mean the big one. <laughs> I wanna I'm literally just going through and erasing and redrawing because I want some thick to thin and for it to feel a little bit more hand drawn instead of harsh like this. So that is all I'm doing. Really not rocket science. Studio Long says, five years time, Noah and the whale. Don't know where life's taken me, but I'm having fun getting there. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good song. I mean, song choice from the lyrics. I've never actually heard that. So, hey, maybe I'll listen to it right now. After uh, this Adventure Time piano melody finishes, which is very ple pleasant to listen to at the moment. I think this and uh, the Steven Universe piano medley on YouTube, oh my gosh, they're just so, so lovely. Um, especially with Steven Universe. I watched most of Adventure Time, but James watched a few episodes without me, so I haven't seen like all of it. But um, with Steven Universe, it brings me right back to that moment whenever I hear the song, where it's just like, oh man, so impactful, so good. It's a fun, happy song. I love that. I think that the attitude of the song should reflect the person. So I'm guessing that you're a happy, fun time person. <laughs> that is awesome. I actually started thinking about that, like what songs really represent me when 
sad thing again, sorry. Uh, my uncle died, and at his funeral they played, or at least his memorial, I guess, um, they played music that he had made throughout his life, and that was, like, the best send-off, I feel like, is just listening to him sing. Of course it makes you ball your eyes out, but it's still just, like, appreciating what that person put into the world and I definitely like that was uh, my dad's brother and my dad also makes music and so I feel like that will be ugh, someday a very wonderful way to send them into the the cloudy uh, rainbow bridge dealio <laughs> how can I make it fun gosh death but no death is a part of life um but I hope that when I die, people like look at my artwork and think fondly of it and be like, yeah, she did good. That's all you can really hope when you're making stuff, right? Is that just people like it? <laughs> is that so much to ask? It really is when, what was it, like average of a 30 second view on every piece that you have? Like if somebody's looking through your work, it's so fast that, whoa, so fast that they, uh, judge it and move on even if it's like their favorite piece how long do you think you've spent looking at like your favorite pieces it's probably like maybe an hour over your lifetime <laughs> unless you're doing studies of them oh my gosh then you look at them forever I'm gonna change the trajectory of this line a little bit keep doing the gradient when I'm trying to do <laughs> rotate, sorry. Hmm, maybe I'll make this one a little small loop. A little baby loop. It was just getting too close to this plant and bugged me a little bit. Another visual hiccup I'm trying to make right. Boom. So pleasant to work online stuff. It's like I know where I'm going. <laughs> the opposite of your song, <laughs> where it's just like I know exactly where I'm going and I'm having no fun getting there. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> no, I definitely want to have fun getting there, but it's fine to have a destination too. One of uh, the most fun like road trip things that I've ever done was when my family went down to uh, Santa. Cruz cruise or Monterey Bay. Monterey Bay was where we had our family reunion one year and so my family rented this van and we all went down together and it was like the most fun thing to just experience the west coast all together like that and one of my favorite memories from that was when we were actually coming back up to Oregon uh, aside from the Monterey Bay Aquarium because that was definitely my favorite but uh, the road back up we were taking, I think it was 101, uh, up the beach, and on that way there is Bodega Bay, which was where they filmed the birds, and uh, or at least where it was set, I think, and it was this wonderful time where we came up the treacherous kind of cliffside that you drive up, and then we landed this tiny little hotel in Bodega Bay, which is like a very small town, but we get into the room, my dad ordered pizza and we watched the Harry Potter weekend that they had going on and we all just like lounged and ate pizza and watched Harry Potter. I mean, is there any better way to spend a night? <laughs> I think not. <laughs> it was awesome. I think one of the special things also was honestly just having pizza around because we were definitely not like a junk food family. We didn't eat out very much. And my mom is definitely like a very healthy eater. And so like every every lunch at an elementary school, I remember it was always like carrots and grapes and maybe like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's like the sweetest it got. And then my friends would literally be bringing Lunchables and I'd just salivate over them like, oh my gosh, that looks so good. <laughs> but hey, there was free chocolate milk every day. That was sweet, literally. <laughs> 
<laughs> I also remember in elementary school, they had this thing, uh, so, you know, elementary school and school food in general was like notorious, notoriously bad. But at our school, there was a rumor that the, the burgers bounced. So you would take one of the burger patties out of the burger and it would, you'd like throw it on the ground and it would go straight up to the ceiling, like a bouncy ball. And I mean, that was like the rumor or whatever. Nobody ever got the burgers. Cause I think it was the same day as like chicken nuggets or something. So you'd always choose the chicken nuggets. I'm vegetarian now. If that doesn't tell you why, I don't know what will. <laughs> but uh, one of my favorite things, aside from that rumor, obviously, uh, was every day when I went into the cafeteria, I would look up and make sure that there was still this action figure stuck on the ceiling. And it was uh, Spider-Man. And it was just like this tiny action figure, but I think it had gotten stuck in one of those, you know, like those ceilings with holes in it, you know? And this was a tall building. I don't know how somebody got it up there, but it was there until the day I left. And it was my buddy, you know? I'd always just look up there and be like, I'm reassured. The universe is right when Spider-Man is stuck to the ceiling. And with the burgers bounce, clearly. <laughs> Our refried beans stuck to the styrofoam bowl for an entire lunch period. Styrofoam lunch bowl with beans in it. That just does not sound appealing in any way. Ugh, so sorry. Of course, when middle school hit, like, you know, we'd have, like, Godfather's Pizza or something. Like, every day that was available with, you know, chip bags, and uh, there was an ice cream vending machine in our cafeteria. Like, there's just way too much junk food. Um, and that... For a kid who is just given, like, money to buy their lunch, that's, like, way not enough, <laughs> like, accountability for me. Um, so, of course, I got trash food. But then the one time that they would have, like, salad or fruit, you know, it was, like, a cup full of strawberries. I remember getting, like, 20 cups one day because I just could not get enough, like, fruit, you know. And it was just one strawberry per little paper cup and so I would just go back and get more and get more and then the salad was two pieces of like cut up lettuce with way too much ranch dressing on top in that same little paper cup like, now I think I understand why parents are so upset about their kids getting like malnutrition basically at school because you're sending them to this place trusting that you know they're gonna take care of your kid like they would take care of their kid I will if I ever have kids or I, you know, I have a niece right now and I just want her to always have like a homemade lunch <laughs> and my nephew, of course, but he's older now. He knows the ways of the, <laughs> the lunch at school, but, uh, it's just one of those things that like, oh my gosh, they got to get their stuff in order, man. The nutritional system here is not good. I'm guessing we're all from the U S right? I don't know if anybody else is not <laughs> from it. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, sing song. <laughs> so, I like that, like, action of sing song. <laughs> Heck yeah. Oh my gosh, the refried beans stuck in for upside down. Those are some thick beans, man. Those are some real thick beans. Oof. It's like eating paste. Good times, you know. Now that I make literally everything I eat myself, it's just like, I don't know, I, I appreciate it so much more, I think. And it's much better food, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it was gross. <laughs> yeah, basically. I'm sure we could write a book of all the stories that people have from like elementary school. Before Michelle Obama was on the scene, making nutrition a known fact. <laughs> Alright, just a few more lines, guys, and then we'll be out of the forest and into the raccoon balloon. And then obviously we need our idea solidified by the end of the stream for the next one. So fish wish, uh, seal seals, seal seal seals, seal seals. 
owl vowel we could have like little cutesy letters so they sit on top of all the vowels that'd be kind of adorable owl vowels owl trowel is another thing that would go well with plants because then it would be like gardening supplies kind of thing because it's a little bit of a stretch owl or maybe it could be hoo hoo like question marks and a bunch of owls hoo 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 Also guys, I'm gonna get uh, an ergo stand for this Cintiq so that I can make it go at whatever angle. This is my only complaint about uh, the Cintiq, which I was given by Wacom, so like I'm literally not complaining about my Cintiq. This is amazing to have a free Cintiq given to you. Uh, but what I'm saying is like, if I were to give like a product review or something like that, I feel like it's very necessary to have full range of ability when you're an artist, especially like just sitting eight hours a day is not good for any human body. So anything that can ease that kind of tension. Um, like I said, I got this ergo pencil or stylus holder that's literally just making it so my hand doesn't have to scrunch down as much to grab this. It makes it very easy and it's supposed to be better for your hand. Um, so I'm trying to lessen the impact of this career choice on my body. <laughs> Someday I'll be like some amazing Olympic athlete while drawing. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> Never gonna happen, but it's the goal. <laughs> Tristan. <laughs> Owls. What other animals can I draw? Or do I want to draw? Because you can draw anything if you put your mind to it. I think we're good. I think we're pretty darn good. Oh my gosh, it's already 8 p.m. Guys, I have no idea what time is happening. <laughs> Tristan draws the word anything. I did it. Boom. Did it. <laughs> anything. I appreciate that <laughs> deeply. <laughs> Just clap. Just perfect. <laughs> Boom. Did it. Done. Did the thing. Oh, crap. There we go. <laughs> Undo it or else it's just on there forever. Okay. Let us leaf. Let us put this on the big boy. Yeah, I think it's to the point where it's, like, loosely done. It's not super tight. Things could obviously be fixed, but, like, we don't have to to make it complete. And I like that. I like that, like, you know, mixture of complete and complete. Uh, there are probably going to be some issues about having it 
tile perfectly, but that's for me to worry about and you guys to not care about. So uh, I'm going to put it on the big boy and then we can try it out if it's feeling actually good on the templates that I told you about, the mock-up templates. Do -do 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 -do. And duplicate, collapse, select. And someday if I keep doing patterns with you guys, um, then I am going to definitely make an action for it. Edit both. Newest one. <laughs> it looks like the slightest change from the other one, but oh, slightly tighter. I love it. It's awesome. If you view it from far away, it's like not super noticeable that it's tiling. It's more noticeable than the bun one, bun bun one, I think, but we fixed a lot of the issues with it. Um, if it ever became like, oh, we could like really use this on something, I would maybe like squinch it all down, like all the individual elements and then add more of them just to add a little bit more variety and then uh, have it less noticeably tiled. But that being said, I think we're, we're heads and shoulders above where we were. And is it a perfect pattern? Nothing's perfect in this world, you know, just except for you guys. I do want to do one thing and it's adding a little tooth to this guy and then we can re-export it as like the big one and then we can start putting it on things which is the really fun part you guys excited Woo! all right check it out it's biting it to be like rounded but not to be too weird <laughs> Tristan says thank you thank you I'd buy anything pat and anything better <laughs> should we just do that like just anything all over it would be amazing <laughs> Woo! <laughs> thank you Tristan you're my hype man works so well okay what was I gonna do anything else I mean, this guy's technically biting it, but I don't, I don't care that much. Okay. I wanted to try something risky for a second, and you know, we have Photoshop, so let's just try it. Basically just turned the leaf layer, I mean, it's got the bugs and the flowers on it as well, but it turned it to a really light yellow behind there, or green, yellow green. <laughs> Pro hype man. <laughs> Tristan, that's what I get paid for. Wait. <laughs> no, he's realizing it. Ah, quickly, let's change the subject. <clears throat> so, about that other thing. Uh, yes, yes, quite. Mm. Oh, my phone's going off. Anything important? Hmm. Oh, but Tristan, what I was going to say, actually, um, because of your completely valid comment that this is a webcam, uh, I am going to get a nice camera for teaching classes on SVS, uh, but I'm considering whether that'll be like, I guess if I get it for the classes, I could use it for live stream. I just don't want to burn it out by having it on for hours at a time. The webcam is clearly like made for that, but this quality isn't the best, you know, and I do love like fancy cameras and I have all the stuff to set up a DSLR. So I think when I get it, I, cause I'm going to get it for the classes anyway, uh, I might as well just like test, you know, do I like the webcam? Do I like the DSLR? and just go with what's best. And I think the test really will be if I use the fancy camera and it gets too hot during a live stream like this, which is uh, probably like one and a half, maybe two hours. So yeah. 
A DSLR would be fine for a webcam. It shouldn't burn out. Really? Okay. I've only, like, just seen stuff online about it where they're like, oh, it might be overdoing the sensor or whatever. Um, but that's just... It is what it is. I have to figure out if it's for me or not for me. That is the question. I got a little bit longer. I thought it was too long. Now listening to Group Love, Ways to Go. crazy just adding like a bunch more leaves now it's still got like other shapes in there but I just wanted to feel what it was like to populate it with even more leafiness it could really depend on where the leaves are too whoops Tristan says you'd probably need an, yeah, I have the El, El Gato cam link to use it as a webcam though, and some cameras don't work for it. Totally, yeah. Um, yeah, I've gone through that whole deep web hole of <laughs> everything that works with it because I have the cam link and uh, it worked with a camera that I was borrowing from Anthony, actually two cameras that I was borrowing. Um, the problem with the first camera is it would turn off every three minutes. You saw that where I had to like click the, the display button to keep it, you know, working. And then, uh, the other one was very, very fancy. I was only borrowing it cause it was like $3,000 and I was not ready to plunk that down at all. Um, but it was a beautiful camera. You'll see on some of the past live streams. Wow. It looks so good. Uh, and that was, uh, it was only running on its battery, so it also died one of the streams because I didn't have an AC adapter for it. So there's just always a problem. So I figure, like, instead of borrowing cameras and instead of um, having kind of a, whoops, a clunky setup, like, just make it a permanent setup for me. So I want to buy the camera, I want to buy the AC adapter, make it ready for streaming and for just video recording for classes. So that kind of stuff is, like... I, I got it. I got to just plunk down some money. And I'm looking for 400 to 600 dollar cameras. Um, and luckily, uh, I know somebody who is in with the Sony crowd. So I'm going to look at, uh, you know, ask him for advice. This is Tammy Coker, one of the residents. Uh, <laughs> I'm dying. But he has used Sony for a long time for photography. So I'm going to ask him about, like, you know, what the actual mechanisms of the cameras are worth and all that stuff. Because I know a lot of people online are saying, the camera, yes, it has something of power, but the real thing that like makes the difference between a great camera and a bad, or a good photo and a bad photo, video, whatever, is the uh, lens, which the lenses, if you know anything about cameras, oh my gosh, they get expensive. So I'm trying to figure that out as well, like how expensive is too expensive? Uh, it, can I spend as little money as possible to get the best output possible? That kind of stuff. Gonna try this too just to see this is experimentation time guys so just hold on uno second and uh, I'll start putting them on the mock-up just to see what they look like but I also just want to play with it because what's the point if we're not playing right whoops did I not define it I did not I already had a video chat today, so that always uh, exhausts my brain a little bit. <laughs> uh, so you guys can tell probably, especially if you're on YouTube after the fact and you're like watching this stream after it's already happened, it's probably like, oh my gosh, she's she's got something going on with her brain. <laughs> oh my gosh, what am I doing? I keep filling it. Green leaves, white leaves. I like the green leaves, I think. Ozona, see you later. 
Oh, head out for some dinner. You're always just leaving us for food. What's that about? Is it like more important or something? <laughs> Have a great dinner. And thank you so much for being here. Once again, you're my fave. You're amazing. <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, we'll catch you later. Love the pattern so far. Everybody says bye. That's so sweet. Tristan says, since you're an Adobe resident, see if Adobe can hook you up with someone, maybe a sponsorship. <laughs> uh, all of the other residents, basically, like everybody was saying, they, they had us make a sheet at the beginning of the year where they were like, okay, what stuff would you need just possibly? And we'll see if we can get any brand deals to work out. <laughs> Tristan, just eat your computer. Clearly. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Good advice all around. So, um, one thing that... Sorry, I just noticed that the bug is really dark on here and kind of stands out. Anyways, um, so what I was saying was they made us do a brand sheet and then uh, we got to work with some brands and not others. Obviously, I got like everything I could ever dream of from HP and Wacom. And... Uh, they were actually saying that I could do a deal with Samsung as well, but then that overlapped exactly with SEBWI, and I'm really glad that I went to SEBWI instead. Um, but I had to, like, you know, say, you know, politely decline. I'm sorry that I'm not available during uh, the time that you need me. And I could have probably gotten a lot from that because Samsung's like, they've got a lot going on at that company for sure. But it's not always about like what you get from it. It's, it's about timing. And also if you believe in the product is a big thing. I've never used Samsung, so I couldn't say like, I'm a huge fan. I'm a supporter or anything. Wacom HP. I've definitely used, I've definitely like loved everything they're doing. And HP also has blurb, which is a big printing side and I'm still working with them. I actually just did an interview with them so that they could use it on their email campaign. Um, stuff like that is to me, like the coolest part of it because you can actually contact like I don't know seeing the advertising part be so connected to you just being an everyday illustrator is really cool because then I feel like I can almost relate to it more when I see ads that like illustrators have helped make uh, it's kind of like seeing Kyle Webster who was an artist who made brushes and sold them on Gumroad for years and then Adobe was like, hey, you want to integrate? And he was like, hell yeah. Like, that is just a person just like you and me becoming a brand ambassador, an evangelist, everything, because they already did the work. They just became, like, official. <laughs> so cool. Anyways, what I was going to say, uh, deal with Sony. Um, almost everybody was like, we need cameras. And uh, it's really hard to get that kind of thing. It's like heavy machinery. And I don't think any of us, maybe Tammy got camera, maybe. Um, but he, I mean, we all had to work really hard for our brand deals and like make sure that we did enough to deserve it. <laughs> um, so I don't think I could have fit in also a camera deal unless they just wanted me to do like a review on a live stream. <laughs> Hey, camera deals. <laughs> you want to talk Canon or Sony or, uh, oh gosh, I know the other names. This is brain dead. This is, this is what it looks like. Hi, I'm brain dead. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Clearly you need a golden Ferrari. <laughs> that would be very helpful. Uh, yes, the golden Ferrari I'm still waiting on, you know, they're just like taking a while to get back to me. <laughs> Control Z this until I get green. Let's see, do we still have it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna turn it off for now because it's not perfectly lined up or anything. It's just throwing it in to see if I want more greenery. And I, yes, I do want more greenery, but that's for the future. It's fine. Hi, guard tier. Okay, this is my curse, man. Everybody on the stream, I can't read your name except for Tristan. Like you're easy. Come on. <laughs> Tristan says, do a tour of their factory. Oops, a camera went missing. <laughs> Sony, I'm joking, don't hurt me. <laughs> I'm joking too, Sony. Tristan made me say it. I have to read the chat. <laughs> no, that is uh, very <laughs> probably not going to happen at all. <laughs> either. Like a tour of a factory. That's pretty awesome. If, it, if that could happen, that would be really cool. 
But uh, I've gotten some pretty cool tours of places, actually. I got to go to Chronicle Books most re- recently. That is a publisher I absolutely love, and it was so cool to see inside that place. I was actually just talking to Julia about it today because um, I was just saying, like, it's like being in a magical library. They have so many books in that one building. Uh, Zona would love it. I <laughs> absolutely love it. So, hi, uh, Gartiri. I can't say anyone's name. Hi. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us. We're just finishing up this uh, raccoon balloon pattern and talking about stuff. So if you want to talk about stuff, you're in the right place. Eat your computer. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, And of course, residency questions. I'm always here for you. So if you need anything. (laughs) Studio Long says, I think you nailed my name. (laughs) Thank you. I've really worked hard on saying long appropriately. So this is the big version of the pattern uh, with extra leaves in it. So I'm going to keep the leaves out for a mo, and then uh, actually we already have that pattern. Boom. It's just the one underneath. And then we're going to apply it to some mock-ups. So let's check out my mock-ups. Yo, yo, yo. Open. Look at these mock-ups. Oh, they're beautiful. Uh, let's do the bag mock-up first. So this is the one I did for bun buns. Uh, and it is literally just like this layer for the pattern. I didn't do like the full nine yards where I made it like fix or, you know, like go with all the, um, angles of the bag and stuff. I felt like if it's a mock-up, it doesn't have to be exactly, exactly perfect, but you know, it's up to your level of perfection. Mine is very low. <laughs> As you can see by me saying repeatedly, let's make it messier. Let's keep it loose. (laughs) Keeping things loose is an artist term for like, I'm not doing this forever, okay? (laughs) If you want me to do this for another 15 hours, I'm sorry. It's not happening. (laughs) Obviously, this mock-up template is a lot smaller than the uh, gigantic template we have for the big version. Um, albeit I think that one's like over 20 inches and 300 dpi so it's it's pretty big (laughs) Gartiri Gartiri (laughs) I'm never gonna get that right I'm gonna call you Gar hey Gar (laughs) hey Gar oh that's the character from Iron Giant I love it uh, okay. Hi, I'm a big fan of your work. It's 5 a.m. where you are. Oh my gosh, I'm sick and have been for three days. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Well, get some soup, cuddle up, and watch some pattern stuff happen. I'm so sorry that you're sick. That is no fun. No fun at all. Oh, it's kind of cool with the orange inside. Oh yeah, there was other stuff. <laughs> Tristan said, oh no, feel better. You're truly a super fan. <laughs> truly, you are suffering so much to watch this right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I, oh, being sick really sucks. I've probably been sick more than like ever uh, this year because of traveling so much. It's no fun. It is absolutely like, especially being sick well traveling uh that was the last trip when we went to san francisco the last time in early december i was sick like up until the day i left i felt like oh i'm getting better thank goodness and then once i got down there i was like all sick again because of just like plane rides and stress and all that stuff (laughs) tristan sends you my computer to eat oh so good so good oh yeah that's the good stuff nutritious plenty of gigabytes for the tum tum (laughs) uh james says looks good on the bag thank you uh gar says i always love patterns they're so satisfying to make they really are uh that's why i've been doing this like as a series kind of on the streams is just because it's so satisfying it's like you get to quickly kind of lay something in and show it off the one thing i don't think i would do on stream though is like design out the initial sketch just because it takes me forever to get the right like you know connection of everything and also i have full psds of just really bad sketches of like wonky animal parts and weird things that like might rhyme ish and they all just like get you know 
left behind in the dust. And then there's one raccoon that makes it to the end. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys would want to see that. All right, so here we have a bag mock-up, and I made it a little blue on the inside. You could also, you know, make it any color I think from the pattern would work well. Um, but I like the way it looks right now, so I'm going to save that out. File, save as. And I've got a whole system that isn't really set up yet because I don't have a new fo folder for this guy yet. Let's do in here, we have this naming convention, man. All right, so I'm gonna do rack ball, boom. Uh, and that is good. I'll save it into that folder for now and then later move it because you guys need to know that, my plans for the future. Do, do, do. Let's do, let's do apron because the gift wrap is the most fun one. So I'm going to save that for last. Whoa, it's way smaller in this one. I'm going to delete that. Bring it over from here. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Haha, <laughs> how perfect is that? Now the question on the apron is how big do you make this? Because my goodness, there are so many options to like make it really small or really big and they're all really cute. I actually really like that size. Overanalyze, no need to theorize, I can put your mind to rest. Oh yeah, <laughs> the RAM will give you energy. <laughs> have you thought of making a Patreon? Maybe sharing the sketches and stuff on there? I actually do have a Patreon and I shut it down for the residency because I knew I could not keep up with it and all the stuff that I have to do for it, the residency. So it's on a hiatus. Um, I think one person is still so nice and gives like $1 a month even though I'm not doing anything and I feel really bad, but they're so nice. <laughs> Um, but I got to talk to the people from Patreon. They literally contacted the residents and were like, hey, we want to talk about Patreon and how it could fit into your life and stuff like that. So I fully want to make it a future thing where I actually keep up on it and make it really engaging. Um, it just, it takes a lot of upfront effort. It is like opening your own business where it's like maybe two, three years until you see a profit kind of thing. And I'm, I just wasn't ready for that before the residency. And then during it, obviously, this is my full-time job. So um, I absolutely love the people at Patreon, though. They are so wonderful. And uh, just seeing what comes out of there. Actually, one of my old managers and one person who actually recommended me for the uh, residency, he gave me, a, what do you call it, like a reference. You know, he told them I was like, no, it wasn't psychotic. I wasn't going to kill anybody. Uh, he was my manager and he is one of the top earners on Patreon right now. His name on there is Printable Heroes and he makes D&D &D figures that you can print out at your own house and like cut out and stand up as little figurines for your games. And it's completely lucrative. He is a genius for hopping on that and just doing it so well. Um, so he, he's like making full earnings off of that. I feel like he could quit his job and just do that. <laughs> Won't kill anyone. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Top marks. Yeah. <laughs> she, she really is a, a good character, you know, and you, she doesn't murder you <laughs> on those days when she's nice. Okay. Uh, I like the orange, but I'm going to play around with some colors just to see if I like them better. James says, shout out to Marshall. Yeah, he was our manager when we were working in video games, and uh, he's a top-notch character. Thank you, Marshall, so much for uh, telling them that I wouldn't eat their babies. That was a really nice thing of you to do. <laughs> Alright, I'm turning this all green because I like green. But what green, Anna? What green do you like? I like that green, guys. That green. Mm. 
Yes, I'm still listening to music. How dare you ask me? <laughs> Sorry, the computer stopped playing music and said, like, are you still listening? And I'm like, Pfft. you don't turn it off. Don't turn it off in the middle of it. I'm in a jam session, man. What if you throw off my groove? Don't throw off his groove. All right, for your fun's sake, I am going to duplicate this and just try out different sizes just to see what we like. See how much more condensed we can make it. I mean, it's still cute because it's raccoons and balloons, obviously, but is it better than this? If you're wearing this as a human being, being a uh, human size, you know, generally. Uh, thank you, I do like that green as well. I think it's a good green. Good job, green. Just like, keep doing your thing, man. Uh, this, is it too big, is it too small? One of the most important things though that I found as a consumer of cute pattern things, I like the cutest ones to be like right, right front and center. So I'm gonna put that boy right there because I like him a lot. Maybe I should have him looking forward at the bug. That'd be really cute. Little you know, interaction between them. Hmm. Alright guys, you gotta vote big or small. What do you think? Small? Big. Small? Big. What do you think? Let's move on to the wrapping paper while you vote. Open wrapping paper mock-up, oh yeah. This one's really fun to do. And there's my name. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a big one. See, I think that's too big because you don't see a lot of the pattern. And the whole point is that they get to see it, right? sometimes. <laughs> James says, I think the larger one reads better. Tristan says, small. <laughs> and then Long says, big. <laughs> Long says, big. That makes sense. Let's zoom in, people. There we go. Uh, Tristan, we must fight to the death. He definitely said to the death, and now he is... Uh, gonna do that right i mean we gotta have a showdown can you film it where do you guys live this is gonna happen okay haha <laughs> <laughs> we're helping with opposite opinions <laughs> exactly okay so let us leave Just trying to find like an area that captures the cuteness well. There's this line that just doesn't like have a lot of raccoon in it. Maybe I would fix that if I were a pro pattern maker. Now let's mess with this inner color. See, there's the pattern. And there's the bunny coming out from underneath. Ah. And you know, the goal here, just like Bob Ross, you know, says, it's not the goal is not to be perfect. It's not to like have this flawless thing. It's to learn from it so that the next time you can make it even more of what you want to put out into the world. It's all a journey. Thank you, Bob Ross. Sometimes I like a lot of contrast between them, but mm, not so much right now. That's kind of cool. I like that. That's cute. I would totally use that wrapping paper. Also, uh, Society6 started making wrapping paper, uh, or at least they're rolling it out. They sent out an email to all the users saying like, hey, get ready. It's going to be wrapping paper time. And I am super into that because doing these mock-ups makes me just like want to do it. I want to make it. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
And James says, haha, of course, short would say big, <laughs> long. <laughs> it's literally the opposite, James. Good job. Uh, Studio Long, good luck finding me in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Jason says, I'm in Canada, eh? <laughs> James says, you and your healthcare as a right. Ugh, we were just talking about moving to Canada again. I mean, jokingly. We'll see what happens in the future. I really don't want to end up without healthcare. That would suck. Uh, we have okay insurance now because uh, I went for the cheapest plan, but we still had to pay for uh, James's visit because I didn't realize that like, oh, copay doesn't apply to just like every other visit. It has to be like a physical to get covered. It's a whole thing. It's just insurance. Why? Just why? <laughs> Can't you say on a sheet, like, what you'll get? No, you have to, like, look up these plans and see a bunch of charts that make absolutely no sense and don't actually match up with what they're saying on another chart. So annoying. Anyways, uh, that's my rant. <laughs> uh, James says, not jealous at all. <laughs> uh, James says, the pink is cute. Yellow is cool, too. Actually, it's warm. Get your color theory right. I mean, what are you? An artist? Oh, I like the yellow, so I'm going to go for it. Uh, and then I think the vote was for big, right? So we're going to keep that there. So let's save out some JPEGs. And then we're going to call it good, I think, because honestly, like, we've done our work here. We've done the good stuff. I'm going to call this rack ball. Boom. And then save this out and you guys will see a post of this soon and you can say you were there you made it happen it was all you rock ball boom we have done the work people this has happened it's a thing <laughs> all right save everything save it all save it all and tell me, what are your goals for the week? I want to know just what you're up to, artwork or otherwise. What are you making happen? So that we can all keep each other accountable, right? <laughs> <laughs> Next creative residency proposal, fixing healthcare charts. Please! We have so many good designers who take all this complex information and make like infographics or like, you know, Andrea's doing the um, UI for a bunch of like apps and stuff. Can't there be an insurance app that tells you exactly what you're getting? I would buy so much of that insurance. Oh my gosh. I just like give them an extra 50 cents per month for doing that. <laughs> but seriously, that would be so helpful. I just don't understand why they make it so difficult. Well, I do understand. It's to make you pay more, usually. <laughs> uh, James, do you even colored? <laughs> Tristan, please make a residency proposal with that as the goal. I mean, next year, clearly. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> Proposals all the time. Uh, studio says, haha, I wish I could get excited about that. Hmm. It's, it's one of those stupid adult problems that I wish, like, I could go back to childhood to avoid. Okay, cool. I think we made it, guys. I think we did the thing. Do you guys want to see a sneak peek of my Harry Potter work? Because I've been doing some covers for that, and I'm really excited about one of the designs. I go back and forth on a few of the others. Um, but it's one of those... Oh, come on. Could not save because it's too big. This always happens. I just have to delete everything. Boop. Then we're good. Uh, please. Use a puppy in any ads and get 100% more buyers. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's got to be puppy filled. I would love kittens as well, but like. Any kind of animal kind of thing. Oh my gosh, having elephants play. Uh, what was the one we just saw, James? There was something that was really, really good and stuck in my mind. You know, I'm on Imgur a lot, uh, just looking at, like, cute animal stuff, and 
like when you find a really good just compilation of a ton of animal gifts like i could live on that all day just a ton of them <laughs> james that uh this file doesn't have anything that matters inside of it it's all just stuff to see how good it is big um although let's see this is the second most recent here i can just undo that Um, I wanted to save this as a JPEG just to have it. I still think I'll clean a few things up, but um, you don't have to watch the nitty gritty of it. That's fine. Uh, I need a better name than that. Let's do, there we go. Back ball. Boom. Now we have a copy of a really big one. So if I ever need just to throw this on something else, like the mock-ups or whatever, then I could just, boom, there it is, done. Real easy. Tristan says, elephant insurance, so easy to use, you'll never forget. That is like the cleverest tagline I think I've ever heard. So please, residency proposal do it. Elephant insurance, the world needs this, okay? There's a lot of community engagement that could happen. Deliverables all the time. You're gonna travel to see the elephants. The PR, just imagine the PR. If you are even half of as, as enthusiastic as I am about this idea, you will make this happen, okay? That's what you say to Adobe. Boom, done, done. You are in. Goal. <laughs> so good. This is where we are the most creative people on the planet right now. I didn't delete the players and yet it's still letting me save. I don't know. It's finicky. Nope, it's not letting me save. Never mind. It was all a lie. All right, now I know. These two gotta go. Boom. Okay, and then uh, I'll give you a little sneak preview of Harry Poa and apparently all my other pieces that are open here. <laughs> so this is one of the sketches that I'm kind of excited for. Uh, it's got some kind of charm to me where it feels like the shadows on the clouds make it feel like they're really flying and I want magic to be like the main point of this cover. However, I might do a framing element. I was thinking about this, making it feel kind of like an old timey cover by having some elements that come in around the sides and like make it feel really framed oh my gosh what if the frame was the mirror of Ira said that'd be so cool and then oh man it could have like little refractions of light that cover the entire like chunk of it into different colors where it's like warm to cool kind of thing that would be really cool because I've had that kind of idea for other covers but we'll see we'll see how it goes it's all up in the air. It's still very much in the ideation process, so, you know. <laughs> 100 buyers get a free element drop shipped to their home. No refunds, no exceptions. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. I love it. <laughs> Do you have art goals for 2019? Ooh, that is a really good question. Uh, interesting. Thank you. I like it. It's uh, cute to me, too. I want it to be a cutesy. Like, it's going to be my style, so, of course, it's going to be adorable, right? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is, it's supposed to be me, not Harry Potter. Like it's, it's my version of it, not its version of me. If that makes sense at all. I'm trying to like lead it more than having it, uh, take over what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to copy Mary Grand Prix. That's the idea. Uh, okay. So, uh, art goals for 2019. Let's talk about that. I want to hear your guys's too. So my art goals, I think would be, uh, Definitely to, well, art goals. It's more like life goals. I want to build a business of my work. And this is something that Lee has been a big proponent of. Like he is helping me build this business. Like literally every little bit of it where it's like tax information and like how to set up uh, QuickBooks and like all the numbers of like business building, um, which is the most useful part to me because nobody taught us that like there is no art school that's like hey here's how to actually sell yourself um and so that's that's one of my big goals is just to make myself like commercially and financially viable that i can survive <laughs> without the residency uh and then 
art goals themselves, like, I would love to do some kind of compilation thing where it's, like, a book or a calendar, something to show, like, all of my artwork in one area would be really, really cool. Um, I've talked with Lee, of course, we had the idea at the beginning of the residency to make a book about doing the residency together because I've kept everything from every little bit of it. And I've actually written a few like things down about where we were in the process at a certain time. Uh, and I could see it being a book pretty easily, but that would probably be one that like we do on Kickstarter or something because I don't, I can't imagine that publishers would be like, yes, this needs to be in every bookstore everywhere. It would be much more like a niche market. Uh, but again, Lee has experiences doing Kickstarter, so it would be a lot easier with him in my corner. Uh, and then the other things, let's see, with, I always want to, like, up my skill level just to get better at art. I think that's a general thing. But, um, let's see, like, specifically, I want to, how about we update the dream portfolio every six months? That would be really great because the dream portfolio is what makes you push harder like you your goals get further because you you have goals in front of you I have inspiration at your fingertips that kind of thing so I would love to update that and make sure that it's always what I actually want to strive for and that I'm not getting too comfortable in what I love and am you know going for what my art goal is <laughs> Uh, 2019 goal, finish my portfolio, get work in editorial illustration, and keep applying to agents. That's awesome. That is a perfect one because I feel like finishing portfolio always feels like this like lofty goal, and yet <laughs> Lee says you should have a new one every six months. <laughs> like, okay, wow, you work fast. Uh, but that is, it, the idea is you're already getting work. If you're getting work through an agent, then you can actually feasibly make that much work in six months to refill your portfolio. Because um, illustration portfolios, they're usually like 15, 20 pages most. Um, so, and some of those pages are gonna be processed, so it's not all just straight up artwork. Um, but it's one of those things that really feels like a daunting task until you do it. And you just have to hammer out and do it. Like put your head down, make sure you just get it done kind of thing. And setting deadlines, oh my gosh, setting deadlines is so important. I would not get anything done without having some kind of like deadline and accountability for it. So it's really good, especially like creating on stream, I feel like is great because I push myself to do something that feels final by the end where it's like, okay, we got somewhere. It wasn't just dilly dallying. Um, and that makes it feel like, okay, at the end of it, I got something out of it too. And it's awesome. Uh, Gar says, indeed, at my art school, that was a small side lesson. That's it. Good time. Uh, good luck, Tristan. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was a small side lesson. And that's it. So sad. Everybody needs more, more business, everything. It's crazy that they don't. <laughs> um, I'm drawing some tree branches on here just to see how it looks. They're a little sharp and a little foreboding, so I don't know if this style fits here. <laughs> Streaming forces you to work. Exactly. And I love that. It's a good aspect of it, in my opinion. I am talking to people. I do feel like this uh, working at home can make you feel like you're so much in a bubble. And like, I do love it. That's the danger is I love being in a bubble and feeling like, oh, it's my own work and I get to just sit here and make it. But that's not how you advance your career. You have to talk to people and you have to put yourself out there. And I think that I'm fine once I'm in the situation. It's just the anticipation before it. And so streaming kind of gets rid of that a little bit where I'm like, okay, I'm going to be here. If you want to talk, you come to me. <laughs> it makes it much easier. <laughs> Studio Long says, and just signed up for my first SVS live class. Oh my gosh, which one are you doing? I'm so excited for you because that is awesome. I love SVS so much. And I'm actually going to be doing a live class teaching one in, uh, in the summer. So that's going to be on character design. And I am super excited for it. If all goes according to plan, obviously. Um, but that... SVS is such a good school. I am so grateful to them for like everything they've given to me. I, I taught one like video class and got access to the whole website. So now I've just been learning nonstop from them. Like all their stuff is just golden and amazing. 
What I love is just their method of teaching too. It feels informal. It feels realistic. It feels like they're they're talking to you. You know, they know their audience and they're really relatable. Yes. <laughs> Uh, my art goal, better my portfolio with a project. I will work on my grad project and build that out. It's about a witch and creatures magic. Yes, I am so into that. I love it. <laughs> uh, and good luck with the portfolio. Like a project is so good to like get it. I think it was, uh, Jake Parker who said like make, uh, projects, not portfolios where you just like, if you're making projects that work will carry over to your portfolio and look a much more together and thought out and uh just developed because you're not just making your portfolio you're not just thinking of this one-off piece that will fill this one niche it's it's something that naturally falls into portfolio work it's awesome uh tristan says if you know shauna lynn yes i love shauna shauna parmesan uh she'd love this she's a big harry potter fan too heck yeah no she was on uh, adobe live today and i missed it i'm so sad but i'm gonna watch her tomorrow um, yeah, we met at Icon and she's awesome. I love her so much and everything she does. I'm just like, I want her lettering all over my work. That would be so cool. But it also looks perfect with her artwork. So, yeah. but I, I would love to do a collaboration with her <laughs> and a Harry Potter collaboration. Can you imagine? Ugh, amazing. Uh, Studio Long says backgrounds. I'll keep my eye out for your class. Oh, this is the backgrounds class you're taking. Who was that with? can't remember um, all the classes that are coming up, but live classes in general, you can't go wrong with. Like you're getting live feedback and so much information. And honestly, it's really cheap for what they're giving you. I've uh, taken mentoring classes one-on-one -on -one with certain people from like animation industry and illustration, and it's always worth it, but some of them are way more expensive than others. So just know that at SVS, you are actually getting a good deal, even though I'm sure it seems like a lot of money. It's just in comparison to other ones it's it's very good deal uh okay sorry i'm trying to catch up tristan says "Ooh, sounds cool gar <laughs> yeah you saw her on adobe live Ugh. okay i'm definitely tuning in tomorrow um oh yeah that was brian that was the one that uh will terry just uh kind of introduced on his stream on youtube he seems super cool uh i love his work and i love just like Knowing a little bit about him, I thought it was really smart to have him uh, stream right before, you know, doing the class so that for, pro you know, like students who might come to the class could actually see like, hey, do I jive with his brand of communication? Because that's really important. <laughs> Gar says, thanks. We'll do different techni techniques, okay, with animation and illustrations and open up a shop with magical 3D prints jewelry. Oh my gosh. So cool. It'll be a lot of work. My deadline is October next year. Okay, you can do it. We believe in you, okay? You can do this. <laughs> Spread magic in the world. That is your mission, okay? Should you choose it, <laughs> which you have, so you got to do it now. <laughs> Studio says, yeah, I've, look, uh, I've looked and have a subscription. Really, really good quality content. I'm so glad. <laughs> Zona, you're back. I really should leave. It's already almost nine. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry, James. I made us like skip dinner. Oh, I'm the worst. Okay. I will uh, log off and say good night. But Zona, uh, <laughs> I, I found a way to keep the videos on Twitch. I think they stay for like 15 days or something. So if you want to like scrub back or whatever, I'm sure you can find it. Uh, we just talked about you behind your back. It's fine. Don't worry about it. We're uh, just telling your uh, worst stories and basically what we really think about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gaia says, would love to see a collab uh, for Harry Potter. Of course. Everybody loves Harry Potter, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how was the computer, Zona? Was it delicious? Did I have just enough uh, bandwidth for you? Trying to think up computer terms, gosh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like sketching on this mindlessly and you can't even see half of it. Sorry. Should pay attention to that. Um, but yeah, this is my idea for a Harry Potter cover. It definitely, I mean, it probably won't be my final idea, but I'm having a lot of fun sketching out other ideas. Um, trying to figure out what I want from it. A lot of these are just like scribble pages. 
Ooh, ah. Oh, yeah, I put color on this one. It's super messy. I like the idea, but it's not quite hidden exactly what I wanted yet. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see what I end up with. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff to take from Harry Potter. It's kind of tempting to just throw it all on a page, but that's not necessarily what looks good. <laughs> <laughs> all bad things I'm sure you said the best of things about me <laughs> you have no idea Zona <laughs> uh, which book am I designing for I'm just going for the first one philosopher slash sorcerer's stone depending where you are um, and I'm really not like making it a hard and fast like it has to only be the first one but it just to me the only hard and fast thing is it has to feel magical and it has to be undeniably harry potter and it has to be undeniably me so those three things like magic hp anna so um that's my only goal and i'm getting closer i don't know if i'm quite there yet but with lee he's always just like okay figure it out until you're done like until something really hits home and strikes you you're not done yet like it has to be perfect um, which I agree with. Picking Harry Potter, it's not a small task. Uh, he likened it to drawing the Bible, where it's like, it's just been done so many times in so many great ways that you can't, like, mess it up. <laughs> like, you have to do it justice and also make it feel really unique because there are so many takes on it. So that's my challenge. And I really do want to nail it, so that's why I've taken this challenge on. Uh, for me, if I were to pick any other book, I would just be avoiding Harry Potter, which is not how I want to live my life. Never want to avoid magic. <laughs> Fluffy! <laughs> yes, Fluffy is peeking around the corner, drooling. Zona was shocked at how cruel she was. Such bad things, she said. Said, like, she's tuned into almost every live stream. She has no life. I don't even understand. She loves books so much. Like, she knows every state to get, like, a book in. That didn't ex describe it at all. But you know what I'm talking about because you were here earlier. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, Norberta and Hagrid are always solid. Oh, totally. Actually, I did a piece a long time ago of Hagrid holding Norberta, and she was um, burning his beard up. It was really fun. But, uh, yeah, it's it's hard to pick, like, which parts to put in. I had a lot of Hagrid sketches at the beginning, because I feel like he's a super big part of transitioning Harry from the old life to the new life. Um, but it just, you know, you kind of have to pick and choose. Like, I could put everybody in. I could put, you know... Fang and Hagrid and in the forest and then, you know, quarrel over a unicorn's corpse on the cover. <laughs> Gar said, do you have a morning routine with starting your art days? Oh, that's a good question. I, I have a routine. I don't necessarily think it's like healthy, <laughs> but I take, like I said, a really long time to wake up and, um, once I'm finally like into the day and sitting at a computer, I definitely need to start by like thinking about what I'm doing for the day. So I make lists, I write them down. I've filled so many of these yellow pads that we got at Costco. There's just like a million things of information on these. And um, so I have to figure out like what the day holds. If there's anything urgent, I do that first. I try to get through any boring work um, because I, I'm not a morning drawer, honestly. I do most of my productive work later in the day. And so that's why I'm here at almost nine o'clock at night uh, talking to you guys because I am so bad at working in the morning. I'm sorry, James. I'm just torturing him by having this lifestyle. I'm just more productive at night. Um, but the morning is mostly for like getting ready for that kind of day. And I'd say like my most productive art hours are probably like from three o'clock to seven o'clock, something like that. It's about right. <laughs> Anyways, I should log off. I'm sorry, but I gotta say goodnight to you guys. And uh, I really hope that you're having a wonderful night and a wonderful 2020, 2019. Oh gosh, I was like gonna say 2019 or 2020 or something like that. Anyways, uh, have a great night and I will talk to you guys later. I might stream again this week. We never know. Happy 2012, <laughs> basically. The world actually ended in 2012, didn't you know that? <laughs> Sona says, I'm such a night owl. My mornings are for meetings and coffee. Yep, that's basically it. 
Uh, that's what's great about freelancing. You work whenever you want. You know, honestly, I would love to work whenever I want. It's just I mess up James's time. Whenever I like go to sleep at a different time and wake up at a different time, I feel like I'm dragging him down. And it's really not cool. So I try to wake up early. My body fights it every second. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Have a great night. And uh, keep up with your awesome attitudes and awesome art. See you later. Ha <laughs> ha.